is the Glass Cannon Network. What's up, Nash? Welcome to the Game Garage, a show where we play tabletop role-playing games. My name is Jared Logan. I'm the Game Master, and I have brought three incredible people to play an incredible brand spanking new game for you, our viewership today, uh, our listenership. Uh, we are playing Hunter the Reckoning from Renegade Game Studios. This game is so new, I don't even have a physical book in my hand. It only <laughs> exists in the digital web. Uh, and here to play it with us today are uh, some fantastic performers, some fantastic players. You know her from uh, our Blades in the Dark show, Haunted City. She's a fantastic improviser, role player, and actress, Josephine McAdam. What's up, Joe? Hi. Hi. Did you, did you like not know what to do with your hands because you didn't have the book to... Like, I know. Usually I hold the book up and this time I'm just like, but what is, oh, uh, uh, and then I just put my hands over my crotch in a protective gesture. Um, Good. All, also with us, uh, and this is going to tie in a little bit to how we play this game, Hunter the Reckoning. Also with us today, the two co-hosts and stars of the mega podcast, uh, gifted improvisers uh, and performers. Please welcome Greg Hess and Holly Laurent. What's up, guys? What's up? <laughs> How you doing? We're so good. <laughs> so I'm good. so excited to play this game. I'm a little you terrified. You just got back from Portugal. <laughs> yes. And you have a little bit of the Portuguese crud. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah if we sound like a couple of chain smokers on here for the first episode. It's because we got a little bit of the, the, uh, the grip. But, but this is this, let this be a lesson to you, audience. You still show up for your role playing sessions, <laughs> even <laughs> when you're sick. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Especially so digital ones. Don't let COVID stop you <laughs> from I, slaying an ogre. Yeah, OK, yeah, you can. show up. <laughs> Should have made am, everybody wear a mask in here. <laughs> I am taking a COVID test as soon as we're done with this. <laughs> <laughs> Look, we're all completely safe because we're in separate locations. That's right. So, uh, so the most important thing is that we sit down and play a role-playing game. That's, <laughs> that's right. the most important thing in my life, and I'm going to make sure it's in your life, too. Um, so uh, here we are. We're playing Hunter the Reckoning. Um, some people listening, watching might not be aware of what this game is. So it's part of the World of Darkness series of games, which Ooh. includes a very famous game called Vampire the Masquerade, which I personally have played 68 episodes of that can be uh, found on YouTube. Um, this I think game you've played more is episodes than me. Oh, I've played a lot of Vampire. Oh, boy, do I know the world of Vampire the Masquerade. I'm an honorary vamp. Damn. Um, this game is about the opposite side of the spectrum. <laughs> Instead of monsters, it's about hunters, people who hunt the supernatural um, in a in a dark and gritty gothic punk world. Although our world might be... Uh, it might be colored slightly differently because we decided to do something interesting. We decided to maybe focus the game a little bit more, come up with sort of a, what you might call a campaign frame for it. All of our characters that we're going to create in just a minute here are going to be part of the same church. <laughs> we decided everybody's part of a church together. So before we get into all that, I just wanted to know, like, what kind of religious background are people coming from? And uh, I know Greg and Holly have a lot to say about this, probably. But Joe, I don't know anything about your sort of your religious upbringing. Did you have IRL? one? In IRL? IRL, yeah. IRL. Or, uh, or is it, or is it no. too personal to share? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, it's not. Uh, it's pretty much non-existent i think i was baptized <laughs> you yeah. think Catholic. you better figure that you better figure that out oh, i was very young uh but i don't think i was i never went i never went to church i think i think something happened when we there was like a distinct experience when we moved to the u.s i think we we went to church when i was younger when we moved to the u.s we went with a friend who was like eight or nine months pregnant and not a single person got up to let her sit down in the church. And my parents were like, 
nope, never again. <laughs> wow. Wow. One strike, you're out, church. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't remember. But it was like just experiences like that and just being like, eh. So what did you do on Sundays? Because I had to go to church every Sunday. So what did your family do on Sundays? Did you just sleep in? Watch cartoons? You know, I didn't even watch cartoons. What did I do with my life? Um, <laughs> maybe you just, did go to church and you've repressed the memory. Uh, maybe. You might be right. No, I don't know. I mean, we just eat food and chill out on a Sunday like you do. Wow. Wow, you amazing. are so lucky. What a blessed life. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, hashtag. You have no religious trauma? Hashtag no religious trauma? (laughs) No, no, I I don't have any any religious drama except trying to, like, escape it, um, like, in coming in other forms in this country, but, yeah. 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 You're about to have some. (laughs) Mm, Yeah, yeah, we're going to make sure this, uh, yeah, hashtag religious trauma will be uh, (laughs) the uh, theme of our game, our entire (laughs) Hunter the Reckoning game. Um, so, uh, let me ask. Cause that's Holly, what I'm so, hunting. I escaped it and now I'm hunting it down. Yeah, Ooh. actually. And uh, that's, that's great. Actually, I'm writing this down, hunting down religious trauma. That's a theme in our game. <laughs> um, <laughs> you'll, you'll notice my like great knowledge of any religion in the game. I'm sure, I'm sure you'll see like how I pull from like vast amounts of knowledge of what we're talking about here. <laughs> well, you know what? That's the great thing about role-playing games is you don't have to be knowledgeable. You just fill in the dots or the the skills that say that mm-hmm. you're knowledgeable and then you are. Like, you also probably can't slay a werewolf, but that might happen. So, um... <laughs> don't know Holly, what was your What was your background? How did you, uh, how did you um, come to religion when you were young? Or how, what did you come out of? Um... Uh, I'm a preacher's kid. Uh, both oh, wow. my both my grandpas were preachers. Um, so I had uh, so I was in church Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night, Christian school, chapel three days a week, Bible class five days a week. I was getting the good news of the gospel, and goddamn, was I getting it good? Yeah. So, um, but I did survive it. Also, um, <laughs> even more specifically, uh, my parents started one of the first ever Christian rock bands of the 1970s called the Good uh. News Circle. So, like in the early 80s, I was growing up in a va- in the back of a van, like traveling around Middle America with my parents' Christian rock band. They were playing like wow. county fairs and like high school assemblies to eventually like stadiums, like opening up for Billy Graham and shit. Amazing! And so you I can come- watch it on YouTube, folks. You can. You want to talk about? YouTube. You want to talk about monsters? I as a <laughs> oh, little God. kid. As a little kid, I was watching my dad cast demons out of human beings whose like eyes were rolled back in their head, guttural noises coming from the demon, like Ugh! as my dad like put his hand on them, raised the other hand to the sky and was like, in the powerful name of Jesus, I command you to come out of this person. And I learned that like demons hate the name of Jesus. So I would like OCD walk around going, Jesus, 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 so that no demons would <laughs> oh hit you right on my body. Later, right. learned, later learned that was like OCD, like because I was terrified. But- it took me well into adulthood before I realized like, oh, at music shows with lights and stuff, people who have epilepsy have seizures where their eyes roll back and they make guttural noises and they foam at the mouth. Oh, oh. So anyway, I've had to extricate myself from a lot of stuff. And in this game, I'm imagining the monsters our religion <laughs> and I'm hunting <laughs> right down. Yeah, no, I've, I've written that down. That's definitely uh, a theme here. Uh, was that Pentecostal? Was that a Pentecostal kind of faith that you came out of? Surprisingly, no. It was like the Jesus movement that came from the 1970s where it was all about this like long haired counterculture Jesus dude who loves you like you've never been loved before, man. And so Hell people yeah. would come up and have these like conversion experiences at the end of like they would do, my parents' music was like reminiscent of like Simon and Garfunkel, The Dead, a little CCR, like Mamas and Papas kind of sound. And everyone would get all excited because it sounded just like The Dead, but it was about Jesus. And they would get all worked <laughs> up and then they would come down and have these like emotional experiences where like members of the band would come down and lay their hands on him and pray over him and stuff. So, um, yeah, I think that's like probably why I became an actor because I was watching like behind and in front of the curtain and being like, oh, this is all a performance. Oh, this is a way to like really like affect people. Got it. 
<laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I mean, I, I'll just confirm, like, uh, I became a comedian and a performer because I was raised Pentecostal. Oh, and my, I not, 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 neither of my parents, but my grandfather was a minister. Uh, and uh, I saw a lot of that kind of laying on hands, you know. Um, Slaying in the spirit, speaking yeah, in tongues. Yeah, like, you know, shaking, falling, yeah. speaking in tongues. I saw a lot of that, and it's so powerful. And I did similar things. I didn't walk around whispering Jesus, but I would... Uh, I would I would I was always afraid the rapture had come. Yeah. Me so too. I knew that my grandmother <laughs> would go up in the rapture. Uh, so I She'd would call my grandmother to make yep. sure she was still there. And if she Same. was still there, the rapture hadn't come. Yeah. And um yeah, I, I think it does turn unfortunately it turns children into performers. Oh my god. The worst <laughs> The worst fate you could imagine for them. It transforms them into actors. Is uh, it, that's exactly it. Oh my God, Jared, I had the same thing. I always, when, when I would come into a room and no one would be there, I would look for piles of clothing like when Obi-Wan Kenobi died because I'm like, they've ascended to heaven and I've left behind because I always felt like a black sheep and like I couldn't like find the Jesus gear in my shifter. So I was always like, I'm left behind. Now I'm just going to be like tortured by Lucifer for all eternity. Yeah. If you don't know what the rapture is, we will get into it a little bit more, but uh, viewers and listeners at home, uh, basically, it's when Jesus calls all of his faithful up into the sky to meet him, and they did. They are snatched away. The Bible says they would be snatched away, or at least the people that came after and interpreted the Bible uh, said that that's what would happen. So um, that when Jesus Christ comes back, everybody kind of disappears for a while. There's a show called The Leftovers that's sort of about it. You should check so that good. out. So too. Good. I love The Leftovers. So good, Greg. Greg let's not let's not oh, leave wait, out Greg. Jared, Greg, wait. Oh, yes. li- little known fact. Watching the season opener for the final season of Leftovers, season three of Leftovers, first episode of the season kicking it off. I was like, this is weird. This music sounds familiar. It was the Good News Circle. The Leftovers used one of my parents' Christian rock Ah! band songs for that HBO show. (laughs) That's amazing. I thought I was like, awesome. And they got paid $600 for it. Yeah. My mom called called me seven months later. I was like, well, we just got a check in the mail from HBO. So it looks like they're good for their word. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> oh my gosh that's awesome wait does greg do you have a connection to the leftovers because we might we could all be tied together by the leftovers yes so i was I, in like two of their episodes oh you, you were in the leftovers that's very small oh so cool i love yeah. the leftovers i um i love the book the leftovers too it was a very very good book and um yeah i'm tied to the leftovers via holly and her her dad singing in the season three opener <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. <laughs> what was your background greg I I grew up in the church, grandfather, pastor, great grandfather, pastor, but I grew up Presbyterian, which was nice because it's like not so fundamental or um, you know, evangelical. But I was a youth I was a youth leader, I was a camp counselor, I almost went to seminary. Um wow. and then also found improv and, and comedy and it and saved <laughs> me in a different way. But I um I was a religion major, so I was a I was I I know a lot of, of of weird American religious history after the Second Great Awakening was my favorite <laughs> stuff to study. So I love like weird you know cults and sects, CTS, and I love weird sex too. And um, <laughs> yeah, sure. And small denominations and things like Wait, that. Wait, let me write down weird sex. Yeah, weird <laughs> sex. both kinds of sex. That's my power. Um, so yeah, <laughs> I kind of have a I I I've always had of of. Uh, obsession with with uh, especially American religion man it is a it's a whole thing unto itself the Pentecostal stuff I love it's bananas so, yeah. and by loved I mean loved reading about it and studying it but um, yeah don't don't practice it anymore <laughs> sure um, so I mean I think everybody uh, understands that it's a complex identity <laughs> uh, but at the same time, uh, I think it's uh, rife with horror possibilities. Totally. And so we are going to uh, we're going to set ourselves up to tell a kind of a, a scary story uh, that starts with a church, and we're going to begin today by creating characters. Uh, I want the people at home to get a little bit of an idea of how creating a character for this system works. So each of you have kind of thought about what kind of character you want to build. And uh, I guess I'll just start with uh, Josephine McAdam. Joe, <laughs> what is your concept for your character? Uh, we, we, all I said, all I told you guys is that they all need to belong to the same church. That's, that's where we're starting. So 
Uh, what's your concept for your character? Um, yeah, he's gonna he's gonna be is he him? Very small. He him. Got it. Uh, okay. Youth leader, skater, uh, TikTok dude. Um, I he's think, a Christian TikTok uh, performer. Yeah, absolutely. Um, constantly preaching, Excellent. trying to bring in you know people that are on the same wavelength as me, and just like Christian TikTok uh, is huge now. It's yeah. Oh huge. sure. I'm mm-hmm. pretty big on it. Even though I'm not. <laughs> I think we've got like I've got like an ongoing show that's like exercising and exercising. Um exorcising. Right, yeah, exorcising. I get it. Yeah, yeah I get yeah, it. baby. I'm like, do you say those differently? After I said it, I was like, there really is there a difference? It's How do not, you say it? it? You're right. It sounds the same. Both okay, ways. great. So you kinda of have to be like, I'm gonna exorcise your demon. <laughs> You can also exercise a demon. I think yeah, you can fun. exercise it. I mean, they need some calisthenics. Keep it tight. Both. Demon is ripped. Um, yeah, I think uh, is I find the username uh, Skating Preacher Boy. Skating Preacher Boy. Uh, yeah. I, I love this character. Um, yeah. Do you have a name for him yet? Oh, shit. You can wait, we can wait on names. Names are the hardest part. So every character in... A World of Darkness game gets an ambition and a desire. So an ambition is sort of your long-term goal for your character. And the desire is sort of a short-term goal. It might only be like for the first episode that you want this certain thing. Okay. Um, so should, and, we, should I wait on desire until like you can wait on desire episode? if you'd like to. Def- uh, well, no, you could you could go ahead and say I have a short short term goal in mind, or we can leave it blank for now and you can kind of fill it in later. Uh, okay. But I, I would like to know his ambition. What is let's his see. ambition? Um, let's see. <sighs> to be a, a vehicle of God. To be the like the the weapon of God. The weapon um, and the voice of God. That is that <laughs> is a great that's a it. great ambition. But I I think the book wants us to um Has to, to be make even. it something that you could know when you've done it. You oh, know, shit. Um, and I should have I should have uh, been clear about that. So okay. is and, and just think about that. I'm gonna go ahead and talk to uh, our other two players about their characters, and then I'll come back to you. You can okay. go. I know what With his ambition. ambition is. Okay. So um, what about you, Greg? What tell us about your character? So. Uh, so my characters, uh, I do have a name. His name is okay. uh, his name is Kip Van Poplin. Kip Van Poplin. Great. Now Kip is a uh, he's an usher. He's a volunteer. He's on the volunteer usher uh, crew. And if people are familiar with ushers, it's who collects the uh, you know the offerings every week, the tithes. Right. Um, there's something about Kip. He's kind of got a an interesting backstory because if you look at him, he's kind of like a cross between. Like, uh, like Mr. Burns and Ned Flanders. Like he's like he, he he's kind of like the, the the if they had a child, he's kind of dorky, uh, a little bit shifty, but tries to be nice to everybody. And the thing is, you know, he's trusted entrusted with money all the time. Um, but he actually got saved in prison in a prison ministry, so he has kind of an interesting dark past that he doesn't like really people to know about or get into now he's happily married he's got a couple of redhead twin boys that he loves and but yeah he does have kind of a bit of a a seedy past i love it that's a uh, beautiful perfect kip van poplin does kip have an ambition uh something that he wants to achieve long term that you would know when you've achieved it does he have do you have an idea of what that might be yeah i think kip wants to um i i mean is this is this specific enough like he wants to uh have the trust of um well uh, <laughs> i guess maybe uh kip or <laughs> what, what would an example be like jared like uh he wants to earn the trust of all the of of of, of everyone at the church or something like yeah. that is that is that too broad no, I like that a lot. Um, so he he wants he wants to be put in a position of trust. Is that right? Yeah, or and he, I think he, if specifically it could be he wants to be the on the board of elders at the church, ah. which are you know like a governing body at the church. 
um, you know, you've got the pastor usually, and then you've got elders who are sort of like the lay people who are in charge. So they do all the finances and, you know, every all the decisions at the church. Um, and he wants to be the head of the board of elders. The head of it. Okay, yeah. yeah. That's that's a perfect ambition. Okay. Uh, and uh, so, uh, and then you think about his desire. Maybe you kind of will announce it when we kind of really start playing in earnest. Great. But that's good for right now. Holly, tell me about your character. Uh, she, her, uh, t- angsty teenager named Winnie, who is a little fluid in um, sexuality and um, maybe gender, but is like on the precipice of it. And um, I think maybe comes from uh, an org family and um, uh, distrusts everything, hates all authority, and is... <laughs> um, is very anti-authoritarian and very um, uh, just starting to like wake up like a sleeper cell, like waking up and realizing uh, like that there is a truth and everything that she's believed is true so far is not true. And um, so I, I, and I think her name from her org family was Winnie Black, but she has started calling herself Willie, Winnie Wild. When you say org family, do you mean that her family belonged to uh, what they call the orgs in the book, which are like um, monster hunting organizations? Yeah, like the governing bodies uh. who the governing bodies who are also trying to destroy monsters, but they're not to be trusted because they're institutions and like just like the police, they need to be abolished and destroyed and dismantled. Whoa. Great. So maybe her father or her mother or even both are uh, like black ops, like monster hunters, but they work for the government. Yeah, exactly. So they're totally corrupted in Winnie's mind because Winnie believes that it has to be like, sort of like individual, um, like bounty hunter almost, because you can trust no one. Right, okay, I I, I love this. And this is already the players are throwing me a curveball because I when I I didn't expect uh, (laughs) such a such a intense background, but I but I want to let you know, I love it. So that's happening. I think that she's been if if I can add just a layer, I think she's kind of been kept in the dark, but she's gotten hints of what's really going on, right? Yes. Okay. Um, And uh, and her greatest desire. So also I think it's perfect that all these characters are from the church world because that means that their basic DNA as human beings is to be faith-based. Yeah. And um, so what better people than faith-based people versus evidence-based people? And so Winnie is on the precipice of moving from being a faith-based person to being an evidence-based person because she's fucking waking up and seeing this stuff. And her biggest desire is because she learned in the Bible that when someone asked Jesus how many times you should forgive someone when he was giving them the lesson of turn the other cheek, if someone hits you, offer them the other cheek, that like stuck with her really hard. And Jesus' answer when asked how many times should you forgive someone, Jesus said, they said, should you forgive them seven times? And Jesus said, no, 70 times seven. So Winnie now has that stuck in her craw and she's not going to stop until she's killed 70 times seven monsters, which is 490. <laughs> wow. Um, okay, um, I think I think we're gonna I think we're gonna set up Winnie to where she's just kind of barely aware that this stuff is going on. It's not she has her suspicions, right? Okay. Uh, and she's very interested. Um, oh, we'll and reel her I love back the 70 in, times bro. seven, but uh, as as let's let her character de- develop to where she's like, oh, this is definitely real. I'm definitely murdering everything. But okay. um, uh, let's see. Why, why don't we? I mean, for me, it sounded like. And, and please do not let me put words in your mouth. Her ambition is to sort of discover the truth behind er- everything. To kind of discover what's really going on. Yeah. Right. Okay. So, uh, which is something she could do. She could discover. The truth, whatever that means, uh, behind what her parents do, behind what's really going on in the world. Uh, and then once she's achieved that ambition, we just pick another one for her. Great. Um, all right. And then what about uh, what about our, our skater boy? Does he have a, uh, a name yet or oh, a, yeah. uh, an ambition? Oh, yeah. Let's call him uh, Ezekiel Gaius Oakley. Ezekiel Gaius Oakley. Wow. Yeah, but you can call him Zeke. Right. Zeke. Zeke. 
And uh, what's his ambition? Uh, let's say this it could be you like to become famous. You know, yeah, I'm gonna like, say it's not. Let's not. I, it's not that deep, but like the number one like uh, uh, Christian influencer. Would be. <laughs> yes, I number one Christian influencer. Number yes, one. <laughs> I love it. Okay. Oh, you're and, gonna make uh, so much money, baby. <laughs> oh man, uh, imagine how influential he would become if he actually got some monsters doing oh, yeah. using their powers on oh, yeah. camera. Yep. Oh, mm-hmm. that would drive his likes way up. Okay. Oh, absolutely. Um, so now that we've kind of tackled who they are and their ambition and desire, we're going to choose a creed for them. Now, I, I, like I just told Holly, I think we're starting our hunters off. They're not fully like in the hunter world. They don't already know for certain that there are monsters. We're going to kind of like see their origin story, but we should still pick their creed. In the game Hunter, every hunter has a creed and that's sort of their approach to uh, solving or investigating the supernatural. Um, And uh, the creeds are entrepreneurial, uh, martial, inquisitive, uh, faithful, and uh, way, uh, I'm sorry, not wayward, underground. I believe that's, I believe I've gotten all of them there. So uh, basically, uh, these are different approaches to how you deal with the supernatural. And even though our characters are not completely initiated into this world yet, we need to know where they're going to go once they have been, once we've gotten through the origin story uh, and gotten into that. So um, martial characters believe in using force to hurt kill, destroy the supernatural. Inquisitive characters are uh, more intellectual. They believe in sort of investigating and learning everything they can about the supernatural. Um, Faithful characters are driven by their faith. And even though all of our characters uh, belong to a church, we shouldn't shouldn't necessarily have all faithful characters, but faithful characters are driven by their sort of... um, faith in God and uh, the, you know, the belief that everything will turn out all right as long as they um, adhere to their faith. Um, And then uh, entrepreneurial characters, they like innovation. They like to figure out ways to uh, even make money off of hunting monsters, but also, well, it almost sounds like your character is entrepreneurial, uh, Josephine. It almost sounds like Zeke. Yeah, because they liked they like innovation. They like new things. They like uh, to um, come up with clever, like innovative ways to take on the supernatural, as opposed to using old tried and true methods. Um, and then uh, mm. finally, the uh, who have I skipped here? Inquisitive. Or no, you did that. We got the inquisitive. Oh, the, the underground. Underground. The yeah. Underground are uh, you know generally they come from criminal backgrounds, which is interesting because we have somebody with a criminal background, and they uh. Uh, they like underhanded techniques for taking on the supernatural. They use criminal techniques for taking on the supernatural. Um, all of these characters get certain <coughs> bonuses when they undergo certain types of actions. For example, um, the underground hunters can uh, get bonus dice when they use stealth and subterfuge mm. in service of the hunt. Uh, whereas a martial character, as you might guess, can get a uh, bonus dice when they are in physical conflict while on the hunt. Um, Faithful characters, faithful characters get, um, they get extra dice sometimes when they are in a conflict with a supernatural. So the marshals get any physical conflict, they can get bonus dice, but the faithfuls get it when they're in conflict with a supernatural creature. Inquisitives get bonus dice when they, uh, when they are gaining information, such as research, breaking and entering, interrogation. Um, let's see if entrepreneurial really, really fits for your character, Josephine. I, says, I kind of, I, well, I kind of think that faithful makes more sense because I don't think, I don't think he's doing TikTok because it's new. I think that's yeah. just what he grew up like, like that's what is there right now. I don't think okay. it has anything to do with his interest in like being uh, ahead of the curve necessarily. Okay. Okay, he's absolutely. not smart enough for that. And even though I said we don't need to all be faithful, um, I think that uh, you know we could have more than one if we needed to. I mean, there could be. Th- I mean, there's certainly 
cells where three martial hunters all work together. So, <laughs> you know, we don't have to like, we don't have to say everybody has to be a different snowflake. So actually I will start with Greg and ask you, what do you think your hunter's creed is? Um, definitely underground. Underground. Um, I yeah. love it. I love that he's this like straight laced dude who actually has all these like criminal techniques and stuff. Yeah, I think he, um, you know, he's not a, he can be, but isn't a vi- violent person. But, you know, I think his thing is, uh, in, in his past, maybe just a tidbit would be, I think he did some some financial crimes for, for uh, to cover up, um, to money launder, things like that. And so he's, he knows how to... He knows how to keep things in the dark, and um, and, and 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 he knows how to help people who have bad intentions. Uh, uh, awesome. He sounds like a little bit of a, like a wolf in sheep's clothing, just a little totally, bit. Maybe he's totally. trying to be a sheep, but uh. <laughs> he's trying to be one of the flock. But he's definitely a wolf. Right. I love it. Okay. Perfect. Uh, we'll put him down for underground. What about Winnie? What kind <coughs> of uh, a creed do you think Winnie will take up? I want so bad to say Marshall. That's what I desire, but I feel like she's inquisitive. Interesting. Those are two very different uh, things. So um, you want to do Marshall because you think it would be fun to kick some ass, right? Yeah, I have a strong desire. I think because she's like, I think because she's this small little like also skater, Joe. Um, hey. She's a little, she's a little like skinny, like scrawny, weakling, like skater kid. And she just wants to feel like powerful and like, like where she can like, and just come in guns a blazing and shit. But I feel like her nature is naturally very inquisitive because that's what, what like is driving her whole thing is that like, I feel like I've been lied to this whole time and believing it has caused so much suffering and I'm fucking sick of it. I don't think that it'll stop you from being able to have strength, like, and still be able to kick ass in the, if you do go inquisitive, cause we'll still place like dots later. And you can still allot them to like having strength. True. Right. And the book keeps going on around it. Like it'll be like, just because you're inquisitive doesn't mean you can't fight, or just because mm-hmm. you're martial doesn't mean you're not smart. Like, so well, they make they make a point of that. Well, what does our cell want? Like, what do we want in this cell? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah. Well, I think it, an underground and an inquisitive. I mean, that works so far. It works well together. Wait, what? Uh, I'm was- underground. And and what are you, Joe? I'm gonna go faithful for sure. <clears throat> so doesn't it feel like we need some fucking martial law, man? Oh no, I mean, <laughs> but there's gonna be. I mean, I'm gonna build him to just. It's just gonna be strength, charisma, and no intelligence at all. So <laughs> I think having so some intellect might be helpful. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I think here's what I think. I think that you know, unlike some games, we don't need to necessarily make sure the party is balanced. Yeah, it's uh, okay. okay. You'll just have to. You'll just have to find techniques for dealing with the problem that play to your strengths, not to your weaknesses. Right. Mm. So if you don't have a martial guy who's really good at kicking ass, then maybe you don't bust the door down and go in guns blazing you use other uh strategies um okay great and so we uh we just handled this but joe you're gonna go faithful yeah 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 it's like a blind optimism it's not optimism faith in god like no matter what he's got my back so i love that i love that like you know on one hand it seems like this guy is very commercial and very kind of um, oh he believes it performative but he's for real he's 100 yeah. percent for real in his faith yeah. i love that wow uh, feels like the new cool. kind of like uh you're you're like um gospel uh, prosperity gospel uh it's just all about the the grind and the TikTok <laughs> and the <laughs> blessings receiving all these blessings all the time yeah basically uh, everybody i follow on, on instagram <laughs> It's about the grind, you guys. I say that every day to myself really do, Jared. right before I buckle down and read a role-playing game book while eating chocolates. Okay. Um, so, uh, very good. We have everybody's creed. We know kind of where they fall in terms of their approach to the hunt. And now we are going to choose drives. So, these are examples of drives. You could come up with one of your own. But, for example, curiosity, vengeance... Uh, an oath, you have a promise that you've made to uh, stop the supernatural, greed, pride, 
envy, atonement. These are just sort of like the thing that drives your character. Like what's the main emotional state or sort of backstory consideration that drives your character? Uh, and we'll uh, start in the reverse order. Joe, what do you think would be a good drive for Zeke? Oath. Oath. Oath, he, yeah. He made an oath to God to uh, oh, yeah, stamp yeah. out evil, right? I think he got one of the, early on, he got one of those, like, spam mail things that are like, if you don't do this or whatever, like, this is directly from, and took it as a message from God about needing to, like, vanquish demons and spirits and... He's taken that oath ever since that day. I love it. Okay, great. Oath is a great one for him. Um, and so uh, what about you, Holly? What is Winnie's drive, do you think? I'm in between curiosity and vengeance. Um. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah, it's interesting. She has a lot of anger, but uh -huh. she also has a lot of questions, right? Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh, well, um, these drives, they kind of allow you to sort of... Uh, uh, power yourself up during the hunt. They, they're sort of important. To, the reason that you keep going when horrible things are happening to you. So what do you think is stronger? Uh, her anger at uh, kind of being kept in the dark and needing to kind of settle a score? Or do you think her need to know, her questioning, her, her uh, rooting out answers? I feel like rooting out answers and curiosity is like great for the character. Um, yeah. I'm still, I, it's, yeah. So let's go with curiosity. I, I um, but do you want to do vengeance? Cause I feel like, <laughs> well, I think that, uh, either answer is completely either drive is perfect for your character. So do you think you're going to go curiosity or do you think you're going to go vengeance? You know what? Since I went um, inquisitive over Marshall, let's go vengeance over vengeance. Curiosity. Yeah. So you do not like to be slighted. You do not like. Well, actually, I, I have an idea for what would could really drive this vengeance. Okay, I'm writing down my idea. Oh God, he's making a note. Um. Okay. So uh, that's great. And then finally, what about our good friend Kip? Kip Van Poplin. What's uh, what's Kip here? What drives Kip? Um. Kip is pride. 100%. Yeah. Ooh, nasty. You because dirty thing. Kip <laughs> thinks he's the smartest guy in the room always. And oh, it's, you mean you know, he's a guy? <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> I And, you know, a lot of times he's, n he's not, but he definitely thinks he is. It kind of reminds me of, like, almost like Walter White or something. You know, you know how like yeah. sometimes Walter White would get so, it, it wasn't greed actually driving Walter White. It was, it was that he thought he was smarter than everybody else and yeah. every time yeah. somebody, so there's something like that in Kip because I think he went to jail because he like took the fall. Like he, he was a patsy, you know, and like had to go to jail for like all the crimes he was doing. So he's really pissed about that and he, um, he, he, he just thinks he's like knows better and and that's really and a lot of times he does he is really smart but yeah pride yeah. It, it's it's his big it's his big blind spot but also his drive um that's beautiful and I think that I I, I see the character so much better now just after adding that trait to yeah. the character um I can I'm really getting a sense of this guy so that's really cool <laughs> Um, under under torture would kip um sell someone out or would he like hold hold fast? Under torture? Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm. I'm. I, this is <laughs> already making me scared because I'm like the most afraid of torture. Is like maybe my greatest fear. I could never oh, be in the CIA. This is a great. You know what? Thank you for bringing that up, Holly. Torture. I mean, because this is a great time, uh, and probably I should have done this earlier. So please forgive me, listenership, to say that this uh, this game is about supernatural horror. So uncomfortable things might happen. I'm not here to be an edge lord and take you uh, beyond the pale, uh, <laughs> but we are going to tell a scary story. So it might involve violence. It might involve mind control. It might involve torture. So um, if those things uh, bother you, uh, you know, just be, be aware. That, take uh, a Xanax. It's going <laughs> to yeah. be all right. <laughs> um, okay. Um, all right, that said, uh, answer the question, Greg. Would Kip <laughs> tattle on us? Oh, yeah. I, yeah, I mean, Kip... <laughs> okay, like, good to know now. Yeah, I mean, he's he's underground. He's going to use everything at his disposal to save his, his neck. And, like, yeah, I mean, he's, he's someone who's constantly weighing one thing against the other so that, you know, to, to, to get a little bit further. 
So I think under torture, he would try to figure out a way out of torture real fast. Real Excellent. Fast. Um, uh, that makes sense. Um, and it, it fits with what what we've learned so far about Kip. Let's and do Jared, this now. Jared, I have a quick question. Please. Um, based on the darkness, um, can a monster impregnate a human? Holy shit, Holly. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's the kind of edgelord beyond the pale stuff that our game probably will not touch upon. Okay, I'm just coming from the church world where like, Greek gods like Zeus would come down, have sex with a female human, and yeah. then there would be a son of God, and that predated Christianity. And so then Christianity or Jesus comes along, and they're like, "Oh yeah, I'm also a son of God." Like, okay, God has sex with humans or whatever. So I just want to know if the monsters can have sex with us. Well, I Ooh, think that that is something question. as an inquisitive you would then, really, really want to. You'd really want to find out. Look, okay. certainly we have plenty of listeners and viewers who would like to think that monsters can have sex with us and who enjoy that sort of fiction. Um, this like, might you might want to be... play. You might want to play Vampire the Masquerade. I'm <laughs> sure you'll get that answer. I'm in. I'm in. Yeah, Vampire gets very sexy. Um, uh, Hunter feels like it's more for people who just get angry instead of sexy. Uh, but okay. regardless, like, I think that that's it. I'm writing it down because I think that uh, so I'm going to write down sex with monsters. <laughs> just, I, I want to know what all they can do to me. Like, you know what just I mean? Don't, just don't leave that note out in your house, uh, Jared, <laughs> just as your wife's walking around. Oh, like, my, my wife would find it and be like, yep, that seems like he was at husband. work today. <laughs> um, okay. What a great job. Uh, yes, uh, absolutely. Um, so, uh, yeah, obviously <laughs> Winnie wants to find out a lot of things. And one of them she wants to find out is, can these monsters give me a monster baby? Yeah. Um, Jeez, Holly. Can they fuck us? <laughs> Um, uh, keep asking those questions because okay. I love them. Okay. Uh, all right. So now what I'd like is uh, for everybody to come up with a touchstone. And uh, we're a little limited in time because we are a show where we're recording and everything. But so uh, normally you might come up with one or two. If you have an idea really quickly for two, that's fine. But a touchstone is someone who's really important to you. And there's someone who kind of keeps you grounded. Like even when all this supernatural stuff is happening to you, you're going to really care about your touchstone. Um, and it, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, someone in your family. It could be a friend. It could even be someone that you love from afar. Um, it could be uh, someone you admire. Um, and I'm going to uh, ask, does anybody have an idea? I think that um, our friend Kip already has some, some built-in touchstones, possibly. I think my twin boys are my touchstones. Uh, yeah. Because I, uh, it's uh, Caleb and Eli are my uh, <laughs> twin boys. And they're just beautiful twin redhead boys and uh they haven't been tainted they're just so innocent and i i kind of i'm i'm doing in my mind i think the lie i tell myself is that i do all of these things for them right but can i ask a question do you mind if they're if they're a little bit older could they be a teen teenagers like uh, our other characters is that okay yeah (laughs) this is this is giving jared more leeway to do horrible things to them yeah. Ah, not happening. necessarily. Not necessarily. <laughs> and I need to picture them, Greg. Are they cute or are they uggos? Oh, they're they're not attractive. That's they're, what um, I thought. That's yeah, what I they, thought. They look like two redhead thumbs um, yeah. that are, but yeah, in a, in they're they're rising seniors, and they're both <laughs> they're both in uh, they 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 both love to they're both wrestlers. Oh yes. God! Yeah. And One of them just, has cauliflower ear. Yeah, and they're covered in acne. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And yeah. I think they're the most beautiful boys ever made yes of course they made Um, in god's image of course they're beautiful beautiful boys yes eli eli and caleb are uh are my touchstones those are your touchstones what about you winnie winnie what do you think uh your touchstones are i mean we already know that your parents are org hunters of some sort perhaps they could count as your touchstones or did you have a different idea in mind Holly. Um, my touchstone. I think. Um, I think my touchstone is a and um, is of a woman who is like maybe like late twenties, thirties. She's like. Um, um, I'm not sure if I want to be her or if I'm in love with her. 
and she like represents everything that I want to be, which is she's like um, really strong and athletic and fresh out of fucks and um, like is a very like um, like real individual and like she can ride ho- ride horses and like um, you're just talking about young Amy Grant. <laughs> Amy Grant is my touchstone. Yes. <laughs> Well, well, let's let's at least call. Do you have a name for this woman? Because we should at least call her Amy, right? Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah, and maybe Amy also comes from an org family and also was raised in the church, but now Amy's out of the church, and mm. I'm just sort of obsessed with her. And she's, um, um, she's like in the way I'm scrawny, she's kind of like fucking like jacked, and um. She's also really elusive. Like she disappears for times and I don't know where she is. And like, I'm always kind of like following her around like a little invisible Victorian ghost child. Okay, great. Yeah. So she represents who you want to become. Um, and, uh, where does she go to? Um, this is a great question. Disappears. Wow. Yeah. And she's left the church, right? Yeah. I like I like all of this. I can use this. I mean, I can uh, play this. Um, and so I, can... I, I I'm imagining in my mind like maybe she's a spy and she can't tell me that. I can only know what I'm allowed to know from her. But um. absolutely, yeah. Um, uh, I, I I love it. Um, I think that uh, she. Uh, you know, she probably has her own place now, right? And you guys yeah. have hung out a couple times. Yeah, and it's so cool to be yeah. in somebody's pad. Maybe it's like a <laughs> cabin. I don't. We don't know exactly where this church is yet. We're gonna find that out in a okay. little bit. But um, she uh, definitely has good. a Papa's on chair. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, I'm I'm imagining uh, like a big comfy Papa's on. Yeah, uh, that's so cool when you're 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, 20 yeah. year olds love those. <laughs> they do. Um, like the most insane chair ever made I mean, the reason we all liked TikTok him when we were community 20. is all over it um, alright uh, so finally uh, I turn to Zeke Zeke who do you think your touchstone is or touchstones if you have an idea I'd love one. some help with the name here but I think it's our church pastor oh uh, I already know his name it's Pastor oh. Mark it's Pastor Mark Cagle <laughs> 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 okay great as in Cagle exercises Oh, um, not Kegel, Kegel. Uh, I'm going to hear Kegel anyway. C-A-G-L-E. That's what we all heard. C-A-G-L-E, great. Yeah, and he is um, he is a really, um, he's not that old. He's like in his 30s. He yes, is, great. That's exactly what I imagined. Right. Very he's handsome. Really yeah. handsome. He is. Yes. Yeah, he's he's really positive. Uh, and um, Dude invests in some self-care. Dude, yes. wife, God would want him to. His wife is so blonde. So blonde, yeah. he's so masculine and muscly. He's like a John Wayne meets uh, Billy yeah, Graham. His, his wife, Karis. Yeah, Karis. I'm going to make him proud. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to make him uh, Karis Kegel. And then I, I can also do, I feel like a second one would be um, my little sister, Mary. Oh, okay, great. And what's your relationship with Mary? I just like always want to protect her like she's perfection like she always strives in ways that I haven't like maybe in school like she's going places and like she's just an absolute gift so I I just want to protect her uh great um so uh that makes total sense to me and uh make sure both of those are down on your sheet and if, if if something feels like your touchstone would come into it don't just wait for me to use them be like hey I probably talked to my touchstone here or Hey, uh, I know who I could go and talk to about this or who would uh, put themselves into this situation. My touchstone. Be sure that you know that they are something on your sheet that you can use the same as you can use the portion we're about to get into, which is your attributes and skills. Uh, and uh, luckily, we are we are closing in on, on the halfway point of creating these characters. Uh, generally, uh, World of Darkness characters are made pretty quickly compared to some other uh, some other uh, games mm-hmm. uh, so I think we're doing well here alright so you need to pick your attributes so your attributes are uh, you know at the top of your sheet they are your character's innate abilities not like things they've learned how to do but things that kind of just have have to do with their innate um, uh, pre prerequisite uh, uh, abilities so 
Uh, basically, we're talking strength, dexterity, stamina. Those are your physical attributes. Then we're uh, talking about uh, wits, uh, intelligence, and composure, I believe. Resolve. Uh, resolve. Oh, sorry. Resolve are your, uh, are your mental capabilities. And then uh, charisma and uh, manipulation and composure are your social abilities. So um, resolve and composure, sometimes people are like, what are those? Resolve is how much uh, you stick to something once you say that you're going to do it. It's your, it's your sort of indomitable will. And composure is more social. It's how much you're able to keep cool in a tense situation. So um, for these <laughs> attributes, you get to have one of them at four. I already see Kip cracking. <laughs> three of them at three dots uh, but we just fill in dots beside of them so one of them is at four dots uh, three of them are at three dots four of them are at two dots and one is at one dot so uh, I can say that again uh, one is at four three of your attributes are at three dots four of your attributes are at two dots and one of your attributes is at one single measly dot okay. so um, let me hear from someone about their process. Joe, you've made these types of characters before. Mm -hmm. Where are you thinking your dots are going? Okay, I like to start with the highest and the lowest. So the lowest is going to... Intelligence is going to be one dot. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> Just prepare yourselves. And then I think the highest... I'm um, between resolve or, ch or charisma. He sounds really here. resolute. He's he's yeah. faithful. His okay. his drive is an oath. Yeah. So let's do the highest in resolve. So four dots there. Yeah. And then and then we're gonna do three dots in charisma. Three dots in strength, because he works out a lot. Yeah. Um. And. Uh, ooh. Let's go ahead and put the other three. Hmm. <clears throat> Either stamina or manipulation. See, manipulation sounds sounds like like a choice was made, and I don't think while he is possibly manipulating people, I don't think he's uh, choosing to manipulate people. You know right. what I mean? Yeah, he's not. He's not a manipulator. I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I, it doesn't sound like he is. I would. I would throw that in. Uh, in stamina, because it sounds like he's yeah. healthy, very healthy. Yeah, yeah. And Let's stamina do... affects your health. Okay. So we Green should go stamina. ahead and put that in there. And then we've got what four of them that have two dots. Yeah, so we'll and do... that'll oh, be the, the rest, rest of... of them. Yeah. And it's worth noting also that player characters are special in this game. They're not, you know, rank and file human beings. Even though these people all came together randomly in the same church, there's something special about them that makes them able to turn into a hunter of the supernatural. There's some sort of deep fire in their soul that will come to the fore, and that's why they get so many dots. Let's talk about Kip. Kip, where do you think your uh, your dots are gonna go? Okay, so I, I, uh, I like Josephine's um uh, beginning and end style. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do manipulation is my four. <laughs> wow. <laughs> okay. Great. I love that is this. great for an underground hunter. That's amazing. Yeah. Um, because I think his whole thing is always, you know, playing playing one against the other and acting like he has uh, nothing to, to do with it. Um, and then <laughs> I think my, I think my strength. I think my strength is my one. I think he's. <laughs> yeah. I don't think he's strong. I just, he's not very strong. Okay, I love that. Yeah. So let's see. Manipulation uh, is four. Kip is at a disadvantage in physical conflict, but he dominates at social conflict. Yes. Yeah. And Jared, it's it's four twos. Um, yes, you get four uh, attributes at two. So then, um, let's see, four at two and three at three. Mm -hmm. So I think his intelligence is a three. Mm. It sounds like it. <laughs> yeah. And I think his um, wits are a three. Wits is how quick thinking he is, how yep. perceptive, yeah. And I think his, um, he is n <laughs> He is not charismatic. In fact, I think he kind of creeps people out. I think people are made very <laughs> uncomfortable by him, but he yeah. doesn't realize that. But 
Kip is someone that's always like, it like would come up behind you and be like, uh, and say something, and you're like, ah, what? Yeah. What? Yeah. what? What? I didn't know you were there. So <laughs> absolutely, okay. yeah. I, so, I totally know the type, especially yeah, at like, church. Huh. <laughs> yeah, like why is that hand there? on your shoulder? Oh, hello, hi. Yeah. So his charisma. Yeah. Let, let me. Uh, so intelligence three, wits three, and then composure. I think he is composed. Like may, maybe not to uh, to other people, but to himself, he's very composed. Yeah. Um. And so then, that leaves me. What? What about his dexterity? Even though he doesn't have strength, like is he like a uh, fast? Like yeah, he's probably dexterous. You know, just to throw another one in there. Um, perhaps to consider because you did right. say he would crack under pressure right I think he yeah under pressure he he or under torture he probably isn't <laughs> great but under pressure I think he's actually pretty good okay, I think he's okay. manipulative under pressure which is good so yeah like let's say um what, okay. <laughs> where am I now four at two um and three at three yeah. yeah did you do your three at three your threes are what are your threes my threes are uh composure Okay. Um, wits and intelligence. Okay, so then right. the rest, then are, the rest are, are it. Rest are it too. Yeah. Okay, great. Let's let's turn to um, Holly and let's find out where Winnie's dots are going. Where? What's Winnie's four dot attribute? Strength. Oh wow! Winnie <laughs> is really trying to live up to Amy's role model presence and really uh, work out. Yeah. And my my one dot is composure. I lose my shit, y'all. Yeah, yeah, I love <laughs> yes. it. This is a really interesting inquisitive hunter. This is uh, she's she has a real kind of violent side, maybe. Yeah, and my threes are charisma, intelligence, and resolve. And okay. My, and my twos are dexterity, stamina, manipulation, and wits. Okay, okay. great. Uh, totally makes sense. Um, and uh, I'm surprised by the strength, but I, I think it makes for really interesting storytelling <laughs> possibilities. And so now what I would like is for you to fill in your health and your willpower. Your willpower will be your resolve plus composure, and your health will be your stamina plus three. And that, there's a permanent uh, row, and then there's what it, your temporary health or you know, uh, willpower is so make sure you dis, uh, d delineate between those two and you guys are going to fill those in and we are going to take an ad break when we come back we'll find out what skills these hunters have and maybe we'll send them into the field when we come back on the glass cannon uh, the game garage here on the glass cannon network we'll be right back Welcome back. You've been hunting for a great actual play to watch, and you found it. We are creating characters oh for Hunter the Reckoning. What? That was a great transition out of a commercial. <laughs> okay, Dad. You're welcome, everybody. I am a dad. Uh, it's over. So uh, during the break, Holly, you were just saying that you might want to switch some of your attributes because you went with strength, uh, which makes Winnie quite the beefcake, but that's not quite how you see her, right? Yeah, I think I was thinking more like, I, like that's my greatest desire is to be so strong. But then I realized like, oh, that means physical strength. And I don't think she actually has that. Yeah. So I should bump strength down to like. Um, is it going to be what, one of your twos or is she, she a three? Is she still Kip. pretty strong? I'm going to bump that down to a two. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, so strength of will would be what resolve. It would be resolve. We have a character that's, you know, that's kind of that's their shtick. I think Zeke it went with a four and resolve. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I I don't disagree. We kind of we kind of talked about maybe her wits. Winnie's wits are like really high because she's she's the inquisitive. She's like the smart one, uh, and she would be a quick thinker. Maybe I mean that's that's a possibility. Or her intelligence maybe is all the way at a four. She's like really book smart, really learned, and, and kind of knows uh, of what she speaks. I mean, do either of those appeal to you? Yeah, I'm going to go four on wits. Great. I love it. Nice. Um, all right. So now that our attributes are squared away, we need to do our skills. And to do a skill, to figure out your skills, what dots you get in your skills, you need to figure out what your spread is. So there are three different spreads. One is jack of all trades if you want to be like okay at a lot of stuff uh so you're always rolling at least uh, you know a die or two 
Um, then there's something called balanced, where it's uh, the middle ground. It's kind of like uh, you're you're not awesome, like you're not super expert at anything, but you've got a you've got a nice little selection of skills. And then finally, there's the specialist, where one skill is your number one skill that you are you just kick ass at it and everything else is a little weaker a little weaker so um i will start with let's say greg greg do you have a thought of whether you're a jack of all trades balanced or a specialist i'm definitely leaning between balanced and specialist and the one that um leaps out to me under the skill list is that Uh that's where we're looking is survival I feel like this dude is is <laughs> very yeah. very good at saving his his ass. Yeah, now survival in the case of the skill generally means, you know, outdoors, finding water, uh, <laughs> yeah, being able to make that. a shelter, stuff like that. Um I, I would say definitely uh based on what you've told me, Kip is pretty good at subterfuge, maybe. Subterfuge, um, yeah, yeah, or maybe persuasion. Yeah, um, definitely. Yeah. C- because, you know, like, this is a guy that was, like, weak and survived in prison. Yeah. And so, like, that to me really is a type of person that was able to, like, come out of prison unscathed. Yeah. So, so what do you think? Do you think it's going to be a balanced set or do you think you're going to go specialist? Specialist will mean one of your skills starts at four. Mm. I'm going to go specialist specialist just, okay so one so for a specialist you get one skill at four three skills okay. at three three skills at two and three skills at one so after that four b everything you get three of three three of two three of one does that make sense yes uh so go ahead and start filling those in and i will ask holly what about winnie what do you think she is is she a jack of all trades where all of her abilities are kind of spread out is she a specialist like kip where she's really awesome at one thing and everything else is kind of spread out or is she a balance of the two it's tough (laughs) i'm in between balance and jack um do you do you or joe have a feeling about winnie i trust y'all's experience I think that because she's looking for answers and she's not quite, you know, landed where she's going to be in life a little bit, that maybe she's more of a jack of all it's trades. Jack. Okay. Yeah. She's trying a lot of things, yeah. Yeah, it's jack. Okay. <laughs> so she gets, for jack of all trades, she gets one skill at three, but she gets eight skills at two and ten skills at one. Damn. Whoa. Got it. So she's kind of got a little bit of ability to do everything. Cool. Can you tell me the uh, specialist ones again, Jared? Just yeah, of course. Yeah, um, one skill at four, and then three of everything else: three at three, three at two, three at one. Um, and um, just to let the viewers or listeners know, when you roll any kind of roll in this game to see if you can achieve a task, you uh, add the dots from one of your attributes, like strength or manipulation, to the dots from one of your skills, like. Uh, driving or intimidation and that creates your dice pool of 10 sided dice you roll those dice and every die that comes up a six or above is a success I'll generally have a difficulty in mind like difficulty three means you need three of those dice to come up six or above in order to succeed if you succeed with more successes than you needed higher than the difficulty that's called the margin and you can use those extra successes to succeed spectacularly you get extra benefits from succeeding more than you needed to. Um, If you fail, say I said the difficulty was three and you only got two dice that came up six or above, then uh, I could let you succeed at a consequence because you at least got like two that succeeded. So I might go, you succeed, but this bad thing also happens to you. Mm. Okay, that's just a little bit of the rules explanation. Let's talk to Joe. What about uh, Zeke? Where is he going? A specialist, um, balanced, or, or uh, jack of all trades? How many how many skills does balanced give you? <laughs> Excuse me. Um, uh, balanced gives you three skills at three, five skills at two, and seven skills at one. At one dot. Um. What? Well, hmm. Hmm. How did the specialist pan out? The specialist starts with one skill at four, and then everything else is a three. So he gets uh, three skills at three, three skills at two, three skills at one. Mm. 
might end up going specialist because I, I only ticked so many. I just kind of was like taking the skills that he might have. Uh, I only tick like 10 of them, so 79, 10, 11. I think, I think specialist works, yeah. Okay, great. I just have to uh, pick what that top one would be, man. What do you think the top one would be? Leadership? Yeah, uh, yeah. Or may, could, could, performance. does a cult have to be like supernatural? Occult, like, so I'm going to, I'm going to recommend based on how the powers work in this game. Yeah. That everybody take at least some occult because um, these skills don't just represent where you're going to start the story. They also sort of represent where the story is going to go a little bit. And I think that uh, since all of these characters are going to become hunters of monsters, a little bit of a cult in each of them is a good idea. Yeah, I almost wondered because his drive, his drive is so sort of like faith-driven. This oath, if it would be like in a cult, the specialty, like he just wants to do the best job he can at like destroying monsters. Yeah, I think that it, you want to put the four in a cult. Yeah. Oh boy. Well, I, I don't know because I think that you do have to interpret occult somewhat as hidden knowledge and okay. you know knowledge of the strange okay, okay. and unusual. So all right, all right, I'll, I'll switch it up. But yeah, I'm, uh, otherwise I don't think performance because I don't think. Man, is it? Perf I think he's think he's being like a hundred percent him. You know what I mean? Like there's no performance happening. Okay. Necessarily. I hear like, you. Um, th maybe, maybe leadership then. Maybe yeah, leadership. Maybe. I mean, he also might, uh, he also might be, uh, have a foreign athletics. Like he's that. Right, right. You know, he's that fit. He's, he's not very smart though, right? No. Yeah, no. It makes sense for leadership. <laughs> <laughs> it, it sadly right, does. Exactly. <laughs> leadership or persuasion, I think could be the four is what I'm. I'm Great. I, Let's go. I'll go leadership. Yeah. All right. I'll fill in the rest. So um, I'm going to come back around to Greg and say, uh, Greg, you can choose a specialty for one of your skills. So okay. a specialty means when you roll uh, that skill and you're dealing with a special kind of subdivision of that skill, for example, a specialty in athletics, if you decided to put your specialty in athletics, could be jumping. So if you said, I have a specialty in jumping, anytime your character is jumping and we're rolling for it, you get an extra die. That's how that oh, works. Or you could say a specialty in science could be biology. So anytime you're rolling for something to do with biology, you get an extra die. So um, let me know where you think your specialty would go. Does the specialty need to align with one that I have? Uh, for example, if I only have two dots in a cult, uh, I could still have a specialty in a cult. You can put it anywhere you'd like. Hmm. That's right. It doesn't like have to be your something. Yeah, it doesn't have to be your four dot like biggest skill. Okay. Okay. Great. You know, I think I am gonna um, I'm gonna try to try to cheat a little bit and give myself a specialty in firearms because I only have a one dot in that. Yeah. But I kind of feel like I need to have this guy is such a wet noodle of a man. Yeah, that yeah. I need just a little bit of something there. So I'm going to say my specialty in firearms is sniper. Is a sniper. that I can sniper? Wow. Okay, that great. Can, that I can actually shoot things from far away. Yeah. Um. Absolutely. Uh. So he'll and probably that's be using I grew up his squirrel hunting. Sure. Yeah. That that, that works for me. His, <laughs> he'll probably be rolling dexterity plus firearms, but he'll get a he'll get a plus one. You know, he'll get a plus die. So, what's his dice pool for sniping? What's his dexterity plus firearms plus the extra die for the specialty? Oh boy. Okay. What is? My, say that again. Yeah. No. That's okay. Dexterity. What's his dexterity? My dexterity is two. Okay, and then his firearms is one. One. And then he'll get an extra die for the specialty. So anytime he's sniping, he's rolling four die. A respectable dice pool. Okay, great. So that works. Um, great. Now, it would take too long maybe to get what everybody's skill is in, you know, in every, you know, skill that they have. But uh, just let me know, does Winnie feel like she's coming together for you, uh... Holly, do you feel like you've got everything almost uh, yeah. figured out? Because you had a lot to spread around. Yeah. Ten it, skills at one you had. Right. Yeah. Um, I, th I think I'm there. 
Okay, where do you think Winnie's specialty is? What what skill does she have a specialty in? Awareness. Awareness, great. And what is the specialty? What is she uh, good at being aware of? She, she is a, a highly sensitive like empath to the point where she's almost like a mind reader. She knows what people are thinking and she almost knows like the future because She's so attuned to what everybody's doing that she can see like what's gonna happen. Love it. Um, I like. I like. I like. You know, it's pretty broad, but I think it, it, you can use it. What about empathy? You want to put put that down. The specialty is empathy. Great. And it'll allow her to really kind of get a lot of reads from people when she's using her awareness. Great. Um, and uh, finally, how is Zeke coming together? Do you feel like the dots are going where you want them to go, Joe? I think so. I'm considering changing to the balanced, but I'm gonna like mull it over. Okay. Uh, well, um, do oh, you know do where... I need to pick a specialty as well? Damn. Yeah, that just tells us a lot about the character, so I like to hear the specialty. Okay, let's maybe do a specialty in. Uh... <sighs> Let's do a specialty in as uh, melee, melee or brawl. Okay, give me a difference between melee and brawl. Melee means you've got a weapon in your hand. Oh, I see. Okay, brawl is just with the fist. Mm-hmm. Um, let's do. Uh... <laughs> oh man, I'm between the two. I'm gonna do a, a like some sort of like martial art, but I just don't know if it's gonna be a weapon or or. Uh... Oh, okay. I love that. Um, well, you know, if it was melee, you'd be like knives or nunchaku or whatever, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. uh, would be your specialty. So when you're using that thing, if it was brawl, you might do like disarming or tripping, you know, mm, or... Oh, okay. Like specific. Right. Uh... Haymaker. Like you just throw <laughs> a big punch. Boxing. You could call, you know... Yeah, boxing. yeah. Boxing um, each other's ears. <laughs> wrestling. Maybe he's on the wrestling team with uh, Caleb and Eli. Love my boys. <laughs> yeah, yeah, maybe so. Yeah, that that would be great. Sure, let's do let's do uh, wrestling. Let's I do, love that. Do you know what? Let's do you know what Hopkido is? Let's do Hopkido. If you, it's. It'll work. There's a lot of grappling and and flipping people over and shit. I don't know where this church is, but there's a local Hapkido school. Mm -hmm. Uh, I believe it, and I approve it, and your specialty is in Hapkido. And just explain to me what that is a little bit, because I do not know what is involved Um, in Hapkido. There is a lot of, like, grappling and getting out of grapples, so it's there's a lot of similarities to wrestling, but then there's also the, like, being able to, like, flip someone over, like, just with, like, a wrist grab type thing or, like, arm bars. And, um. I love this guy. This guy is... I'm, I'm watching his Christian <laughs> TikToks. Oh, yeah. I, I, I see him exercising people with a wrist flip. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, all in right. the powerful name of Jesus. In the yeah. power, in the name of Jesus, I flip thee. All right. <laughs> so, if everybody feels like they got all their dots where they want them, and you've all got um, uh, your specialties, so it, it says you can also add free specialties to academics, craft, performance, and science skills. We're going to keep moving on, but um, just so you know, it's basically saying if, if you're good at academics, you're not necessarily super good at all academics. You you would pick like literature or history, you know, um, and you feel free if you have those skills, academics, craft, performance or science to put a little word there that lets you know what you, you your character kind of specializes in for those skills. You get free specialties for them. Is okay, craft na- making things? It is indeed. So you might put carpentry or plumbing or uh, gunsmithing. Great. Um, so now we're going to do our advantages and advantages are your characters sort of, um, extra perks that they have. Um, and, uh, some examples are looks, your character is very handsome or nutritionist. Your character is an excellent cook. 
Um, some these are new ones that have been added for Hunter. Uh, nutritionist is uh, linguistics. You know multiple languages, but there's also things like allies. You have friends who have your back and will come and fight for you and help you out of a tight spot. Or uh, resources. Resources is money. Your character has money that they can use to spend uh, and uh, you know um, buy equipment. So um, I'm going to uh, rattle off all of the different uh, advantages, and you're going to put seven points in advantages. Um, and let's see. Those go on the second sheet of your character sheet under advantages and flaws, because anything I tell you is an advantage, you can take like a, a, a bad version of it too. Like, for example, instead of taking allies, you could take enemies, uh, and those enemies would give you extra dots that you can spend. If that makes sense. So if instead of taking two dots of allies, you take two dots of enemies, you get two more dots to spend on your advantages because you have taken enemies uh, mm. that could come into play. Um, I would recommend, since we are kind of doing this fast and loose, to unless you have a really cool idea for a flaw for your character, like maybe we just stick to advantages for right now. But the advantages are linguistics you can speak multiple languages looks your character is very good looking of course there's the flaw where you are grotesque and ugly you can take that um nutritionist where you can cook really well and uh, people <laughs> regain health levels more quickly because of how oh. good a cook you are um then there's allies like i said our friends contacts are people who are in a position where they can help you, but they're not quite as um, do or die as allies are. They're more like, I know a guy who works in the black market, or I know a guy who's in the mayor's office, stuff like that. Um, fame. Uh, fame is an interesting one. I don't know if any of our characters would have it, but it means, oh, actually, whoa, maybe whoa, Zeke would. Whoa, 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 whoa. Zeke would, yes. Yeah. Zeke, Zeke could have some TikTok fame. Um, influence <laughs> means Is that, that fame? <laughs> it is. It is in our world anyway. <laughs> influence means it's a, a human institution that will listen to you. Maybe Kip has some influence in your church, right? Um, mask. I don't know if that applies to any of us, but it basically means you have fake identities that you can use. Actually, maybe Winnie has one of those because her parents have worked for a shadowy organization and moved her around a lot. So maybe she has some fake identities that she can bring to bear. A uh, mentor is exactly what you might think. A mentor is somebody who, uh, oh, Amy could count as your mentor if you want it, if, the, if that feels interesting to you, uh, Holly. It means we have a mentor, that one? Yeah, mentor means that, you, would, it, okay, okay. that we have you have one, someone that you can that go to for one. advice. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. it means that you have one, that's right. Okay. Um, resources is money, and uh, the more dots you put in that, the richer your character is. And one of us should be rich at least. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I think my my guy my guy's got money all okay. over the place. Okay. okay. Retainers are servants, uh, people that kind of work for you. Uh, so they're not quite as do or die as allies, but they do uh, they do have some sort of loyalty to you and will do small tasks for you and help you out of jams. Um, safe house means you have a place. Well, you can imagine that's a new one for Hunter. Basically, it's a headquarters, and if everybody puts their dots into safe house, all of those dots go toward how cool the safe house is. Oh. If you guys wanted to be able to use the church, for example, as your headquarters, that could be your safe house, and everybody could put a little bit of dots into safe house, and it would give it some advantages. And then okay. finally, status. Status is your uh, status in the hunter community, not in a influence is in a regular community like your church but status is in the hunter community. I don't know that any of you have that yet. I would kind of leave that blank, uh, okay. probably. Now look, you How have to spend dots? seven dots right now, seven, but if you can't think of a way to spend all of them, just make a note. I have two left over and you figure out during play where to put them. All right, I'm gonna put one in a safe house, right? Cause you're saying they kind of pull together? Yeah, they pull together. All of ours? Yeah, I'm putting at least one there. Okay, I will too. I, I like the idea of having the church. Yeah, safe that's cool. Sanctuary, baby. And I think I'm gonna do influential. Great. Cause, well. Is that for the church or the internet followers? 
The followers, the followers, yeah. Great. The people want to do you favors thing really, like, feels true. Yeah, yeah. You do. What about you, Greg? Where are you putting dots in? So, I'm definitely, I'm leaning toward um, contacts. Yeah. Resources. Yeah. Retainers. Yeah. Safe house. Mentor. And I think I have a mentor that actually is connected to an org that I've like done some terrible things for in the past. Oh, interesting. Okay, great. Uh, there are a lot of org um, descriptions in the book, but we can also come up with our own. So yeah. um, perhaps your criminal past is connected to uh, an org that, that hunts monsters. I love it. Yeah, I, th- I think I did some work work for an org. And then um, they don't have to go to seven, right? That we could put them in five or should we put them across seven? So, so it's seven dots to spend in all of that stuff. So you have okay, to divide okay, them great. up. So you might have one in one thing, two in another, and then four in a third thing. Great. Uh, how about you, Holly? Are you finding things for Winnie to put in as advantages? I'm really into linguistics, mask, and mentor. Okay, great. Um, I would like to maybe spend all my dots in three because then I have more dots, but I feel like Joe should... I also do safe house. For, to, so that we... You were saying, well... If she doesn't do safe house, is she going to have the, like, not have the security? Well, you know, like what it says in Everybody the- can use the safe house if the player that created the safe house says so. But if only you put Dot into safe house, it's yours, uh, Zeke. Uh, and it probably is a bit smaller, right? It probably well, I think is like... Kip was also going to do that, I, right? I did one in safe house, yeah. Okay. How many do we need for it to be the church? Um, well, I, I mean, it can be the church, but maybe it's a part of the church, like the basement okay. or something. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. You okay. guys aren't, you know. Yeah. Okay. And or you it's said a church, if we take... it's on church property, you know. Yeah. Did you say if we take a flaw, we can get more dots in our advantages? That's right. Yeah. What are you thinking of taking a flaw in? I'm not sure yet, but I want to take some <laughs> because I just want a, a little extra. Dot. How many more dots do we get? Like, how does it convert? However many dots the flaw is, is how many extra dots you extra get. Extra dots you get. Okay. Mm-hmm. Because I want to get fame. I right. think. <sighs> I I think I'll do... I want two dots in fame. I, I put two dots in beautiful. Let's be clear. <laughs> two dots in influential, two dots in fame, and one dot in safe house. So that's all of the... That's seven dots. But yeah. then I also wanted to grab nutritionist because I feel like I've always got the protein shakes at the ready for everyone. Ooh, um, thank you for that. So right. you can take a flaw called stalkers. You have a tendency to attract people who become a tad too smitten with you for your own good. <laughs> that sounds really appropriate. Okay, I'll take stalkers. Story of my life. Yeah, I have a couple. Wow. I have a couple flaws too, uh, Jared. If yeah, uh, where I, I need to know if. Well, I, I need. I guess I need some flaws. So in the in the in the book, it shows stalkers as a one dot flaw, meaning you can only oh, okay. get one dot out of it. Is that enough? Is that work for you? Let me see. Well, that's so low cooking, right? I wanted to help the cell, cell chef. I need a. So then I'll need a second flaw. I'll do both. Okay. You Jared, could. I, yeah. Oh, go ahead. No, sorry. No, go go ahead. ahead. No, you go. I, no, you go. No, 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 no. Da, da, da. Um, I wanted to hear you just say a couple more things about mask. Yeah, let's let's look at it. Um, as individuals who must sometimes work in secrecy or with a degree of plausible deniability, hunters find great value in being able to protect themselves with false identities. So if you have one dot in it, you have a f- good fake identity, including a credit card, bank account, credit history, etc. If you have two dots, your mask can pass a background check with the national police. Um, you can also get get like extra um, oomph by picking another dot, which says that you are zeroed. Someone in high places has purged your records. You officially don't exist. Or you could take a dot that makes you a cobbler. You can make or source masks, so you can basically forge new identities for people. I don't know as a teenager how much of that is appropriate as a young person, uh, but I'd say that 
Perhaps because your parents are involved in the shadowy world world of the orgs, you definitely could have the level one or two uh, level of this advantage. What do you think? Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, and we're looking for another flaw for you. Is mm. that right, Joe? Yeah, I'm wondering, because we can specify, right? Like, I wonder if I'm disliked by a certain group. I have to be disliked by a certain group. Yeah, right? um, yeah, sure. I assume. So why don't we take take a dot of disliked, and it's not in the, you know, you're influential among your Twitter followers, but you are disliked perhaps by actual kids at your school. Right? Oh, or yeah, 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 something like that. Maybe yeah. like all of like the burnouts and the, uh, you know, the freak kids that are into heavy oh, metal really hate you. Yeah. Oh, I bet they do. I bet they do. Yeah. I, I, I like that idea. Freaks and burnouts hate you. Um, Ooh. You're, you're, on, you're on their websites as someone to mock and ridicule. And, yeah. Uh, what Absolutely. Would a, what would a cool flaw for Winnie be, Jared? I don't know. Let's see. Um... You don't have to have a fl- well because it's just if you want an extra point to put in advantages, right? Do it's you true. Want, you want extra? It's true. I, uh, you don't have to have a flaw, but um, for example, Winnie could be destitute. She has no, well, no, that's not true. Her parents have some money, don't they? Okay. Um, she could. Uh, Are you she being could, shunned without, by anyone? You could be too uh, too caring, like you're you're so em- empathic. Oh, like my greatest strength is also my greatest weakness. <laughs> yeah. Um, Let's cause see. You, could have an a- you could have an enemy. Mm. That's kind of or fun. Maybe or you, maybe you go without any flaws for right now, or we figure them out while we play. Like, yeah. in the middle of playing, you go, wait, is that happening? Then I think that that's my flaw. <laughs> okay. Did you did you tell her the flaws that's under mask, too, that are funny? I, I feel oh, yeah. ser- serial error is pretty funny. Serial oh, error. Somewhere someone made a mistake to your detriment. As a result, anyone who does a background check on you will learn that you died recently or a, on a dangerous <laughs> watch list. Ooh. That's, that's cool. That's kind of wild. Uh, although I don't <laughs> think it's so necessarily funny. appropriate for what we're doing. So. Sure, sure. Um, all right, hey, so Jared, once, I'm going to take, yeah. take two flaws, actually, I realize. So one is in the looks department. Okay, great. Um, so whatever You're that hideous. could be. I'm just yeah, like... Let me look. I, uh, yeah, nobody really uh, likes One to. dot, you could. it's called ugly. You lose one die from relevant social dice pools. Okay, yeah. Uh, I'll take that. And then um, nutrition. He, he. This guy weighs like 130 pounds uh, soaking wet. So he's just not very nutrient. <laughs> he doesn't cook. He doesn't take care of himself. <laughs> well, there is, okay, so there is no flaw for a nutritionist. It's just a good thing. Damn it. Um, so, <laughs> um, but I think that we've covered it with his one strength. I think that you've really covered. Do you need an extra dot for advantages? Do you need some more advantage dots? I'm just putting one in mask because I do think this guy does have, uh, has, has cooked the books. If, if that oh, makes yeah. sense. Oh, yeah. So, okay. So, so um, if you need, if you need, he can take two dots of, uh, negative looks and be repulsive. <laughs> <laughs> Don't uh, make us look at that, Greg. It's honestly too close to the truth. <laughs> um, yeah, let's do it. He's he's repulsive. He, what? He's, great. Yeah. What are we going to do with him? I but love he's it. Got, um, he's got two mask dots, so get ready. Yeah. <laughs> um, all right. Um, so we have all of our advantages. Now, the last thing that you would do is you would choose your hunter's edges. Um, but I think that we should allow those to develop during play. But we should talk about them a little bit just so people know how the game works. And so you guys know when to go, oh, I think I have an edge here, right? Like, um, I, ha- I think I have a power or uh, mm. a, a um, perk that I could bring into play here. So um, assets are a type of edge. So you can have an arsenal, meaning you have a, an armory of weapons, fleet Fleet means you have a garage full of vehicles that you can allow your fellow hunters to use. Ordnance means that you have access to explosives and uh, really powerful, uh, you know, military equipment. Library uh, means that you uh, you 
can look up things about the monsters. You have an occult library of some sort. Um, then there are types of edges that are called aptitudes, meaning uh, things you're able to do, like global access. It means you're so good at hacking that you can get into someone's like deep information by going online and using your edge of global access. Improvised gear means that you can craft weapons on the fly using equipment and components that you have on you. Um, there's even one called drone jockey, meaning that you can control drones to do things oh, for you. Hell yeah. Uh, and, oh, beast, yeah. and beast whisperer. You have like a pet that like follows your every command <laughs> and attacks for you and things like yes. that. Yes. Yes. Then there are endowments. Endowments are sort of supernatural. Like you're so full of faith that you can sense the unnatural. You can repel the unnatural. Like the power of Christ compels you. Uh -huh. um, and you can thwart the unnatural, meaning you're immune to their powers sometimes. Or you have a holy artifact that you can use against them or some sort of uh, occult artifact that you can use against them. So Hell those yes. are um, just some of the types of edges that exist out there. I think that we should allow them to develop during play because this will be kind of our character's origin story, if okay. you will. So right. but I want you to keep those in mind. If something sounded really good to you, just sort of steer the story in that direction <laughs> and I will hopefully pick up on the hint, right? Okay. And and how how many do we end up with? Like, how does that like mechanically? Very good work? question. According to the book, each character gets two edges and one perk. Perks are like little extra um, characteristics of the edge. For example, with uh, improvised gear, you could take the uh, well. That's the one where you can create weapons and equipment on the fly. Um, you could take like uh, a perk called speed crafting. Normally this mm. edge cannot be used to improvise items under heavy duress, such as during an ongoing physical conflict. But with this perk, the hunter can craft a tool in three turns minus the margin of the test. So you can literally create stuff while bullets are flying at you. Um, so that's what an example of a perk. So in this game, you either get two edges and one perk or one edge with two perks, if that uh. makes sense. Okay. Um, yeah. If it doesn't, oh. don't worry about it yeah. because we're not, okay. we're not that <laughs> interested right now in, in making sure that we have all of our edges lined up because we're going to kind of learn who these characters are during play today. Yeah. And then uh, awesome. at some point their edges will be in place and I'll help you make sure we get those right. Um, okay. Mm. Does everybody feel like their character has all their dots filled in where they should be and they kind of get have an idea of who their character is yeah. yes sir yes Th then i just want to ask a couple questions about the church because we are going to start our first scene where is this church and there are no wrong answers you are creating the story with me right now well you know one thing that came to mind is um you know, Jared, you lived in the Midwest. Holly, we've lived in the Midwest. Joe, have you ever lived in the Midwest? No, that's okay. We can <sighs> do Midwest. There's something about the the Midwest that uh, <laughs> that I love because it's it's not. There's so much. It seems so milk toast and anodyne, and then there's dark things that happen in the Midwest. It's, yeah. <laughs> so that's interesting. Yeah, I was I was wondering if maybe it could be in like you know well i almost said missouri but some people would argue missouri is not in the midwest but like um yeah maybe like outside st louis or something yeah, yeah i i love that um so let's uh let's create a town name and because i think well do you think it's in in a big you don't think it's in a big city you think maybe it's outside of st louis yeah like a it feels like suburb like a suburb okay it could even yeah be like a it could even be a made-up suburb you know. I think it should be made up. Um, yeah. Does anybody have an idea for what it might be called? I, I can throw something out there. Yeah, go. Uh, was it something like Gardenville or like <laughs> Three Gardens or uh, you know what I mean? Something with garden in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Garden. Green you? Garden, Missouri. Green, Green Garden. garden. <laughs> yeah. Green Garden, Missouri. Um, it's outside St. Louis. And how big is your church? Well, big. yeah, I think pretty big. Yeah, 
Yeah, it's, it, it's, it's not like a mega, mega church. church, but not, maybe not as big as like a 10,000 mega church, but like one of those wannabe like, like a thousand. Yeah, I mean, couple, we got Mark Cagle members. as a pastor. We're going to yeah, bring I in mean, lots of. Yeah, Mark Cagle is growing this thing. He Mark really is he's a dynamic leader and it's really it's growing year over year because of <laughs> Mark Cagle's leadership. Yeah. Mark Cagle is doing a great job. I didn't know that, but now we know. <laughs> Mark Cagle is kicking ass for the Lord. Okay. Uh, and a thousand parishioners sounds good to me. Um, what is the name of the church? Hmm. Names are hard. Um, sometimes I just use name generators online. And you'd be surprised what's Crystal available. Crystal Point Community Church. Love it. It's done. Yep. <laughs> Crystal Point. Point. I guess Crystal Point is <laughs> near Green Garden. <laughs> yeah. yeah, Crystal Point. I, Crystal Point. I just see their logos. This just spinning like diamond that looks like it could also kill someone. <laughs> I love it. I'm writing that down. Spinning diamond logo. Actually, um, if they really mm-hmm. are want to be mega church, like they want to be, like maybe they actually do have a three dimensional kind of like diamond kind of sculpture yeah. thing out front, and it's right? Like that rotating. like rotates. Yeah, and yeah. it looks like it's levitating, and you can't figure out like what's <laughs> holding it. Wow, it's just like that's levit- pretty impressive. You know, like those eternal flames that people have outside of buildings or whatever. Instead of an eternal flame, we have a rotating crystal that seems to be hovering. I love it. Um, yeah, the crystal is a part of it. Okay. Um, and then, um, uh, what does it look like? I think we just answered that quite a bit, but it's it's pretty large. Um, it's trying large. to be like a Google campus. It's trying yeah. to look. Oh, okay. It's it very should, it should new be. school. Oh, I'm, yeah, I'm imagining it like, mos- that, like mosaic. Mosaic, mosaic or something. Yeah, yeah like they all and, try to look like corporate <laughs> campuses. And, you know, it's 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 church for the unchurched. It's, it's you know, it's cool church. It's cool it's Jesus. Yeah. 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 And what kind of things does your church do? What is it known for in the community, in Green Garden? For being Ooh. sexy Christian. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, like, and we're we're really like plugged in, right? Like, because we've got the TikTok. I feel yeah. like I'm in charge of that part. Yeah, for so, sure. like the TikTok, the social media. Like, we're always in contact with our community. Great, they internet think presence. they're very cool. Yeah, even yeah. though they're not. Yeah, yeah. super Every, cool. Everybody like puts on a full face of makeup and designer clothes every Sunday. Yeah, designer to the Midwest, though. Like. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, it's so. Calvin Klein. Here, finally, the most important question. What is your church's attitude toward the idea of Satan and supernatural evil? Oh, crush it. I think it, I mean, here, here's my pitch is, yeah, that crush it. They they are, they believe in it and they believe it. It, it is at work. Um, but that's not the first thing they're going to tell you when you walk in the doors of this church. Yeah. Like this is a church that is trying to be like, this is for everybody. This is, but you know, then once you drill down, it's like, Pastor Mark Cagle is going to tell you that Satan is very real and there are demonic forces at work. In but may I, may I add a nuanced spin pitch? Yes. Please. That the church, and especially Mark, like they believe that it's real. But mm. Their stance is much more like defensive rather than offensive in that they're like, oh, it's real, but we're going to guide you to live in such a way that like it, it, you're sort of untouchable. And the three of us are like, no, fuck that. Oh, we're yeah, mur- no, we're going We're in. murdering them. Like, we're yeah. offensive, we're tactical and strategic, while the church just maintains a defensive position of, like, you can defend yourself against these dark powers by living according the way we tell you to. Well, and when he's younger, right, like, as a youth leader, maybe it's the youth are taking the aggressive, yeah. like, spin towards it. Well, we're yeah. going to find out because we're going to see uh, what a youth service looks like today. Um, oh, yeah. But I just want to start our, uh, I just want to give a little more context. So I think Winnie, I think your, I think your parents moved you here not too long ago and you got the feeling that uh, their new jobs weren't their real jobs, like the, not the real reason that they were here. Uh, and lately they've been really uh, not home a lot like gone all the time what i think of is uh did you ever watch the americans yes yes and how those kids were always like where are mom and dad yeah i think that that's kind (laughs) of what your parents have been doing like there's a lot of nights where you microwave your own food 
Yeah. Uh, and you get a real sense that your dad's new position as part of uh, a plywood company's uh, sales department is not his actual job. Yeah. Okay, yeah. very good. So that's how you've gotten here. Uh, and I may I add one thing to that, Jared? Yes, please. I have a friend who just recently, his father passed away and he discovered that his father had been in the CIA his whole life and he thought his father was like, um, working on what was it, Greg? Some animal thing? <laughs> aquatic, aquatic mammal rescue. He thought his da- his whole life he was like, my dad is an aquatic mammal rescuer. His dad was in the CIA, and what he oh. put together after his father's death, when he learned that his dad was in the CIA, is that he put it together that they lived in D.C. and one month before 9/11, his dad moved them out of D.C. immediately. So I want that to be a thing, cause, like like because he knew something was coming. Yeah. And so I want that maybe to be like, we've just moved and I'm suspecting that it's because my parents know something. Um, done. That's that's absolutely Ooh. what the situation is. Um, and so I think that um, with that context, we should uh, move uh, to uh, the scene to uh, Crystal Point Community Church where um, this this particular uh evening it's it's, let's say i don't think it is a sunday what what night does youth service occur wednesday wednesday nights right so um kip you've been uh called by pastor mark kegel and pastor mark has asked you and says that the youth the youth minister uh who needs a name the youth minister brian talbot (laughs) yes youth minister brian talbot uh is uh, is unavailable by phone. It seems like something maybe he's he's had an emergency or something, and they need someone to fill in for the youth service tonight. And uh, Pastor Mark knows that you've been you know wanting to show that you can do more for the church, and uh, maybe this is your time to step up and maybe lead the youth service tonight. What do you think? Well, I think that's a great idea. I've got a I got a bunch of ideas for different activities that we could do to. <laughs> raise money for the youth group and uh or just you know fun activities in general that's that's great to hear kip that's great um so i can count on you to take care of the service tonight then absolutely absolutely yeah remember you know you got to know how to talk to the kids you know i uh, sure i know you have two boys so you know how to talk to kids <laughs> you know to connect with kids uh, it's not about rules. It's about possibilities. That's what they want to hear. Well, you know, I, uh, I have a powerful testimony and, um, and I, I would love if Eli, you know, I love it when uh, Eli and Caleb, they're, they're active in the youth group. And I love to, I love to get up there and show them that their dad's got, uh, uh leadership skills and, uh, <laughs> has a, has a lot to, a lot to show these kids love to keep it positive. Keep it positive. positive. Jesus is positivity. That's what I always say. All right. uh, I trust you, Kip, uh, and I can't wait to hear how it went. And I'm going to try to figure out where Brian's off to. Thanks so much, Mark. God bless you. (laughs) Um, And so um, uh, let's cut straight to the youth service. And I think that Winnie and Zeke are in attendance. Um, And uh, let's hear maybe a little bit of Kip's sermon. Um, (laughs) But Kip, I want to I want to let you know that as you look out at the uh, audience of, of teenagers, um, it seems that there are a lot of empty seats tonight. In fact, uh, I can go ahead and say an abnormally large amount of empty seats tonight. There are a lot of people that normally are there that aren't there. You would notice this as well, Zeke. Winnie, I don't know how new you are to the community, but uh, it does feel like this isn't a strong showing for uh, the youth service here at Crystal Point Community Church. Yeah, there's more chairs set up than there are people (laughs) here, so. Uh, yeah, but you know, like, there's a lot of big fans for uh, Brian, who just seems to be missing tonight. I wouldn't chalk it up to anything, like, more than that, Winnie. You're in good hands here. Kip's a good dude, and I can't wait. To have him be uh, uh, the receptacle that we get to hear a sermon from in a minute. You're just, you're going to love it. Also, Winnie, saw you shredding it on the half pipe earlier. Yeah. Yeah. That was you, right? Yeah, I did 450. <laughs> I just want to nice. let everybody know that there is a big poster up on one of the walls here in the room where they do the youth ministry that says, be the receptacle. Um, <laughs> reminds oh, you to I- be the receptacle of Christ. 
I have a very important physical note I forgot to mention is that um, uh, Zeke has hashtag bless spelled out across his knuckles. These ones. These, but I is think it permanent? I, oh, yeah. They're tatted on. Wow. Yeah. Awesome. That's permanent. crazy. I was just about to be like, I really like your tats, dude. They're tight. Thank you. You yeah, know, just really living cool. that hashtag yeah. blessed life. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yeah. I thought it said breast. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. No, no, no. That would not be. That would be pretty unrighteous of me. Yeah. Well, yeah. it uh, doesn't look like too many uh, are going to show up. So I'm going to go ahead and lead us in a word of prayer. If you all uh, could, uh, yeah. could listen up. Absolutely. <laughs> Dear God, we just are here tonight to uh, just uh, honor you and commune and fellowship with each other, our wonderful youth group here at Crystal Point. Uh, please keep in your prayers, God, the, uh, the wonderful work of Brian Talbot. Uh, he could make it tonight, and so I'm mm-hmm. stepping in for him. And, and also, Lord, if you could just bless Pastor Mark, because we know he is... Uh, He's leading us, and uh, beside those still waters, that's where you meet us, Lord. And so, also, God, we just want to pray for the upcoming foot wash car wash that we're going to be doing to raise money for the uh, the summer missions trip uh, to to Mexico, as we as we say. So, <laughs> Lord, uh, just uh, bless these youth; they uh, they're on fire for you, God, and uh, so and, fiery. Uh, and uh, in your in your holy name we pray amen uh very good um so we can hear a little of the service but i will say kip you notice uh, when you're up there on the pulpit that uh brian talbot had left some notes Mm. perhaps for uh for uh, a service that he was going to do and you notice that uh maybe maybe it um puts you a little off your game because you notice all of these people are missing and he was going to preach on the rapture on the taking up of Christian souls that would disappear when the rapture came. Yeah, it seems here, like on these notes, is uh, it's uh, it's basically a bunch of uh, some it's 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 some verses from Revelation, and uh, and and it just uh, it's circled uh, that the uh, he's written out the final the final trumpet uh, will sound. And he's uh-huh. circled it, and he's and he circled it so much. It, it's it's as if he's broken the pen nib. <laughs> yes. Huh. Uh, yeah. On the final trumpet will sound, huh. and that that is, I mean, uh, yeah, it's definitely a bit unnerving because, you know, we're we're about at fifty percent capacity tonight. Oh sure, Mister Talbot's like always on about the rapture, though, dude. That would also mean that only half of us are like worthy of heaven <laughs> yeah i know i, I mean, wouldn't be surprised if he left behind i uh, no, winnie don't say that yeah have more confidence let's uh I- let's let's just see how kip's sermon goes a, a, a great start to the sermon um but I, I let's just go ahead and try the roll mechanic once to see how it goes so um, you only need ah. one color dice right now. In a little while, I'll get into the desperation and danger mechanics in this game, which are specific to this game. But for now, we're just going to see how a basic roll would go. So um, I'm going to tell you what dice pool to put together to preach the word of God. And Great. I think that it's going to be charisma <laughs> plus um, probably persuasion, although uh, performance would work as well. Um, <coughs> what do you think would be uh, the proper uh or how does kip approach his sermon yeah definitely persuasion and um i think who knows if charisma is uh in (laughs) kip's strong suit he does have a two he does have a two charisma i think Um, i think that you know often in this game i'll tell you what you have to use okay sometimes i'll tell you what do you think you would use but Uh in this particular case i think in order to uh, in order to minister to these youths, you need some charisma here. So okay, use great. charisma plus, and I'll allow you to use persuasion. Okay, uh, so great. you're gonna roll that many dice. Uh, how many dice is that? Your charisma plus your persuasion. That is uh, two charisma and three persuasion. 
<laughs> two so. charisma and three persuasion. So that's five dice. Pretty yeah, good. Yeah, that's good. Roll them and tell me how many come up six or above. Okay. And that's going to tell us how well the sermon goes. <laughs> Do we have crits in this system too? Yeah. So if you ever okay. roll two tens, that act doesn't count as two successes. It counts as four successes. Anytime you roll double tens. And I'm telling you what now? How many come up? Uh, six or above. Six or above. Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> only two. Only uh, two. Okay, that's not horrible. Basically, it, it means y- your sermon was very average, which <laughs> that seems Kip about is, right. Yeah, Kip is very good at a lot of things. But uh, maybe one of them is not public speaking. Uh, no. Being repulsive certainly doesn't help. <laughs> right. Yeah. No, no one likes to look at Kip up there no. sweating through his uh, awkward uh, khakis. So no one feels really on fire for the Lord when you finish. Um, okay. And then, uh, you know, it becomes sort of the social hour time. Uh, I actually will say that the, ser- the, the service is letting out. And our three characters can interact a little bit. I, I'd like to see them talk to each other, what they would say to each other before something else happens. Hey, uh, hey, you two. Uh, what'd you think? What'd you think about uh, when I said, uh, "Here I am. I stand at the door and knock." And uh, you know, if you open the door, I'll come in and uh, eat with them, and they'll eat with me. Did you get that? Did you did you get that part of the sermon? That did you, did you guys like that? Yeah, I mean, I, I I love food, dude. Oh, oh yeah. okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, you know, that's kind of that's that's from Revelation. That's uh, that's going off of uh, you know, right, some of the, right. The, the, some of the notes that, that that Pastor Brian left me. So just uh, I'm, I'm I'm kind of picking up where he left off. If you if you think about it. Totally, totally. It's a warm up phase, you know. Right. I, I really like the book of Revelation because there's like seven headed beasts and stuff but like uh, I yeah, understand yeah. that it's apocalyptic literature and I like sort of don't think we should take it literally also it was like a oh. it was a bronze age text written by one person who probably was on psilocybin or some type <laughs> of thing because it was John the revelator who wrote Revelation and um, he was like on an abandoned island at the time and he was probably eating different things I don't know, Zeke, you know more about, like, Whoa. food and stuff, but, like, Whoa. you yeah. know, apocalyptic literature is basically about, like, op- oppressed people groups, like, trying to give themselves hope to get out of there. So I just didn't, like, get a lot of that from the message, but I mostly was just distracted the whole time because I was thinking about, like, you know, why Revelation and what's it, how's that actually supposed to speak into our lives when it's a Bronze Age text of a person who was on mushrooms writing about seven head dragons and then like how could that possibly apply to us like in our current day and age okay you know uh, 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 Brian didn't leave me any uh, notes about all that uh, so I, I mean I, Winnie is like so smart dude Kip like you should just ask her to help you with the sermon maybe sometime like that's some real great stuff you're throwing out here yeah, I didn't well, understand uh, any of it wow you're kind of referencing stuff you don't know a, a lot about there uh uh, Winnie, so be careful with that. Is all I'm going to say. Just be careful. You all notice, right. you notice, Kip, that there's someone standing in the back, and it is Pastor Mark Cagle. He looks like he's dropped in. Oh, oh hey shit! Guys, uh, oh, hey, Mark. Mark. Well, wow. uh, Pastor Mark Cagle. Oh, Mark. How yeah, are you doing? I, hey, did you catch hey, any Kip, of the? Hey, Kip. I had, uh, I had, I had some time tonight, so I, I, I dropped by and caught the end of your sermon. Yeah. Oh, heck yeah. It, it was uh, six man off the bench tonight. So solid, okay. ma- solid stuff. Solid stuff. Oh, hey, thanks hey, so much. Hey, Mark. It, be the receptacle. <laughs> That's hey. right. We're all gonna be the receptacle, right? Every day, right? Hey. You get up in the morning and ask yourself, how am I the receptacle? Yeah. How yeah. can I be the receptacle? Yeah. For Christ, I mean Christ. Um, Kip, uh, I'm a little concerned about the attendance, uh, and yeah. I still haven't been able to get in touch with Brian. Yeah, you know he uh, he left me a message asking me if I could fill in, and then he didn't uh, didn't didn't leave any instructions. So I just showed up. I was kind of going off his notes there. Do you uh, do you kids know uh, where uh, some of your friends might be tonight? Uh, hold on. Let me check the gram. Yeah. Uh, Is that uh, Instagram? Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, okay. Instagram. Yeah. I've uh, yeah. my my sons are on it. Oh. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I follow them. 
We've there got a pretty be. strong gram here at Crystal Point. Yeah. yeah. You should check it out. Yeah. I, I like that. Um, is that a real diamond in your ear, Mark? That's cool. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, we are the Crystal Point, so, you know. Ah, uh, cool. This is, this is my holy symbol, you know. Ah, uh, uh, yeah, cool. Um, I feel like Christ's power flows through it. Um, ah, cool. And I really, I really recommend, you know, each of you find uh, an object, you know, that can kind of represent, well, how you can be the receptacle, you know? Uh, it's your personal receptacle. All right. Yeah. Uh, it doesn't have to be a diamond, okay. you know? Maybe yeah. for you, it's like uh, an old rubber band <laughs> or a cup you really like, yeah, a literal receptacle. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, you know, I think that that can be really useful to have a way to kind of focus your love of Christ. Yeah, that's I, I keep this rubber band around my wrist so I can, like, snap my skin and make me be more present. <laughs> right, so, Kip, maybe you and the, the kids here could kind of uh, find out why we had a little dip in attendance. Uh, I've been looking at the numbers. It looks like it's been uh, the last couple weeks. Yeah. yeah going think, back uh, two months. I think we, I think we could get to the bottom of that. I hope it's not because of my message. I, I you know, I, I didn't have a lot of time to prepare. So. Kip, solid stuff. Okay, I, thanks so much. I, I was able to follow the entire thing. Uh, there was a beginning, a middle, and an end. Great. And great. Uh, well, I hope you, know, you can uh, mention that to the board of elders. That'd be great. Well, yeah, I could, I could, I could mention that to the board of elders. Yeah, you know, mm-hmm. um, but you know, we all serve in different capacities here at Crystal Point. Yeah, you're right. Uh, we all have a job to do, and we, we, we got to do our best in the place where we're at, you know? Uh, glory, Glorify God and what you do in your day-to-day, you know? Um, <laughs> Absolutely. I guess, uh, I guess is yeah. Hey, Jared, do I, do I see, like, when I look on Instagram, do I see... Like what the kids that are normally here, like what are they up to? You know, like if I go to their profile, I'm like, you know, doing a little yeah. social media snooping. Yeah. yeah. So one of the kids, uh, a girl named Carly that you know pretty well. First of all, um, you don't see anything like abnormal. Like they sure. are posting okay. normal pics from school and things like that. But one of the kids, Carly, uh, this girl that you know, has posted uh, a bunch of weird out in the woods pics. Um, okay. She's like out in the woods and like posting all these pics of like kind of lights out in the woods. Huh. Okay. Um, and um, do I see anyone else there with her? Who's tagged in the picture? Um, it's all really silhouette-y. Like it's mm. kind of like uh, like she's she's being really arty about uh Mm. you know it's supposed to be like beautiful lights shimmering in a clearing in the woods and you actually know where that is um Mm. it's a place where the townies kind of hang out and drink uh you know it's like one of those places out in the woods where they've there's like old couches sitting around oh yeah people go out and smoke weed and uh, and drink near the old quarry yeah Uh. near the quarry yep I, I think some of our our fellow youths might be uh, partaking in some sinful behavior. Ah, uh, shoot. shoot. Where where is that? Uh, where where is that? Zeke. Uh, you know, it's <laughs> <laughs> you know it's the it's the clearing like out they in call the, it, they, uh, they do call it the clearing. That's what they the, call it. It's one of those places that doesn't really have a name. It's it's up on the ridge uh, near the quarry, as our friend Kip has said. You have to walk up a big hill and go de- back deep into the woods to get to it. Okay, cool, cool, cool. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I can show you it sometime yeah. when any time, you know, just you know, hit me. You know, like, do you have your phone on you? Yeah. Let me get you my digits. Okay, cool. Yeah. I told I, I I told my sons they should uh, never go to the clearing ever, and they uh, uh, they, they better not be out there. Oh, wait, it's, you know, great, great, like, observation on, like, what not to do and, like, exercising that self-control. Yeah. Uh, by the way, your sons walk up because they were present for the sermon yeah. tonight. And they're like, Dad, can we get McDonald's? Hey, oh. Yeah, uh, anything you want, guys. <laughs> you guys got a big, uh, they got a big match tomorrow, which is awesome. Yeah, I got to load up. Yeah, well, hey, you're going to have to weigh in and weigh out. Just, just remember that. Uh, so... They're excited about the McDonald's and they're like giving each other high fives. 
I tell you, these these two guys, they can eat. They can really eat. Wow. <laughs> can you imagine? These guys came out of me. Well, I mean my wife, but, you know. Uh, I'm in there somewhere. <laughs> uh, uh, all right, dude. <laughs> A lot of detail. <laughs> so, um, you can do whatever you want, but I would like your characters to tell me what they do next. They do not have to, like, go and look at this place, the clearing right now. They could wait until tomorrow they could talk to some of the kids that they thought went there uh, i really I, i'm saying all this to just say do you what would your character do next and let's uh, start with we can start with josephine what do you think zeke does next i'm gonna wait outside for whenever winnie exits as well so that i can uh see if she wants to check out the clearing together oh wow winnie well what, what is winnie going to do <laughs> she definitely does um, I want to, I have a bike. I have my, I brought my bike tonight. So I found the clearing immediately on my phone and I'm riding my bike over there right now. Okay. Oh, wait, oh. you're going to, are you going together or no? You want to come Zeke? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You're going to be there. You need, you need a, a fellow, uh, uh, someone who's going to help you stay on the right course. I'll be right there by your side. I have pegs on my back tire. If you just want to jump on, I can ride us there. Oh yeah, yeah, absolutely. And I put my skateboard like in my backpack, but I'll ride on the eggs on the back. Yeah, just hold on to my shoulder. Oh yeah, yeah. So all you right. guys are all right. Is, is Kip going out as well? Is everybody going out to the clearing right now? Well, Kip, I think one thing I'm wondering about is uh, it's just what's going on with Brian. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, you know, it. I don't really have the authority. Of Brian, maybe Kip needs to kind of get to the bottom of Brian. What do you think, Jared? That sounds like a great idea. Um, because I feel like he doesn't really have the authority to like go and he's he's just the uh, he's just the uh, he's just the the odd man filling in right now. So I think he's kind of worried about Brian. He can't not answering his phone and uh, wants to great. get to the bottom. Of do you it. want to go over to Brian's uh, house? Yeah, Brian's condo. <laughs> Brian is a, Brian's condo. Brian is a single guy. He's a young guy. Uh, yep. He hasn't he hasn't uh, met a wife yet, uh, and uh, he he has a a place. He's got one of those condos that's kind of attached to a, a like an outdoor mall. You know, it's got like a cold <laughs> stone and an H and M things like that. So you right. can drive over there. And, and the the best part about that Kip is that it's the McDonald's is on the way. Okay, great. So you can pick up McDonald's for the boys on your way over there, uh, and then I, I hear where how Zeke and uh, and Winnie are heading out to the clearing, and so um, let us resolve each of these scenes uh, as follows: um, Zeke and Winnie, let's start with you. You guys um, arrive at a place where it's going to be tough to just ride the bike because you're riding up like a grassy hill, so you have to walk it the rest of the way, and you're going to have to walk deep into the woods. Um, do you want to do that? Are you going to go? You're going. You're intent on going out there tonight, right now, right? I am. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'll help. I'll carry. I'll carry the bike. I got this. Oh, cool. <laughs> Great. Um, and so um, you move into the woods, and uh, as you get a little deeper, you know it's very dark. Uh, youth group lets out like at 10 p.m. You know, um, so. Uh, it's getting up towards like 11 o'clock at night as you kind of head into these woods and you head towards the clearing uh, and um, uh, you can give me rolls to see what you notice uh, as you move through the woods in the dark here. You didn't say that you were carrying a flashlight or anything like that. So <laughs> give me, um, why don't we call them wits plus awareness rolls and tell me how many six or above results you get on that roll. Ooh, I get <laughs> seven dice on that one. I got three, <laughs> three to roll. Yeah, I got two successes. How did you do, uh, Winnie? What am I looking for, Jared? Six or above, how many dice rolled six or above? Six, eight, eight, six, four. Four, okay. So it is only Winnie who notices as you're moving uh, through the woods that something is moving through the woods with you. In fact, mm -hmm more than one something occasionally very faintly you hear uh the kind of the crushing sound of leaves but being treaded uh underfoot uh and for one brief second you get what looks like uh, a glowing eye out in the woods near you winnie uh and then uh 
you know, the quiet sound of leaves being tread upon. Uh, something uh, or some things are all around you as you move toward the clearing. Is the eye glowing? Is it a color or is it just like a... It looks like the eye of an animal. Ooh. Um. <laughs> hey, Zeke. How you Yo, feel? It's a- I feel great. I mean, I didn't get my workout in earlier, so I'm really loving this trek. How about you, Winnie? I, you're not, we're not alone. No, God's always with us. I agree wholeheartedly. Yeah. Yeah. That too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm glad we're con- on the same page. Do you want to continue on toward the clearing, or do you want to look for whatever is following you, trailing you? Or want, a third thing I haven't thought of. I want to behave erratically in my direction <laughs> and see if it is in fact following me or if I was just next to some. Great. So you're kind of not no longer going straight for the clearing. You're kind of like moving around in an er- uh, erratic direction. Um, Whoa. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see. It's, it sounds like you're trying to kind of draw out whatever is out there and you think that it might be an animal. So give me a manipulation plus animal Ken roll. Um, three. I just have one. I have a nine. One nine. Just one nine. Okay. Um, That's not enough for you to get the jump on whatever this is. So uh, uh, do you follow Winnie or do you go to the clearing, uh, Zeke? Do you stick with Winnie? No, no, I'm sticking with her. You know, she's new in town. Like, I don't want to get lost. Okay, so um, as you are kind of like going in circles and trying to like get the get get behind your pursuer, Winnie, you suddenly realize that you've kind of stumbled out into the clearing, and out here in the clearing, it's now empty, but you can see that someone has set up big kind of like powered like lights. They're not on right now; they're off, and they're connected to a generator. Uh, and there are a lot of chairs out he- there, and the clearing looks like it's been really trampled on recently. Like there have been a lot of people out here at once, which is abnormal because normally it's like five burnouts, right? And this looks like uh, hundreds of people have been here. But more importantly, you did not get the jump on who your pursuers wa- were. And out of the woods, as you're standing there, comes one dog, and it looks like a stray, and then another dog. Oh no. And then another. And then another. And suddenly you realize that all around you in the clearing are at least 10 dogs. And they. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Begin snarling at you. Meanwhile, across <laughs> town, you've arrived at the condo of Brian Talbot. All right, let's see here. Number 13. I'm going to go ahead and leave the boys in the car. Yeah. All right. No lights are on. Doorbell. No, no lights are on. Do you want to ring the doorbell? Better go ahead and ring the doorbell. There we go. Immediately you hear thumping inside, and the door unlocks. And Brian Talbot appears. Um, he looks a little haggard, uh, like his hair is kind of in a mess, and uh, he looks a little unshaven. Uh, and he's like, "Kip, hi, uh, Brian. Uh, uh, sorry, come in, uh, come in, come in, uh, come in. Uh, oh, oh uh, do you mind? Uh, what? Hey, hey, boys, just uh, one, one minute. All right. Uh." Hey, uh, everything going, uh, wow, this place is, uh, <laughs> need to, need to clean up around here a little bit, maybe, a little, little, little discombobulating, anyway, um, I, I, everything okay, I, I just, you everything's know, everything's fine, I'm, everything's good, <coughs> yeah, things <Okay>. are good, <laughs> well, I was just, uh, you know, everything went great tonight at, uh, at, uh, Excite, oh, uh, excellent, and- hey, uh, Kip, uh, would you mind covering for me there for the time being? I, I, I don't think I'm going back. You're not going back? Uh, well, well, why the heck? People at Crystal Point love you, Brian. Uh, uh, people, I just uh, can't. I just can't attend a false church anymore. A false church? What do you mean? I mean, 
I, I just don't know if you're ready to hear this. Brian, Can I trust you? Most, well, Brian, you're one of the most talented people that we've ever had at Crystal Point. Uh, and you're, uh, you're smart, you're capable. I just don't understand why you would say something like this. But yes, of course you can trust me. <laughs> Anybody can trust me. I just, I can't go back to that fake, sorry, phony, commercial thing you call a church anymore. I've seen them. I've seen them, Kip. You've seen, you've seen what, Brian? And he looks you right in the eyes, and you can tell that he's absolute serious, absolutely serious when he says, Angels. Well, <laughs> Brian, that's not a bad thing. That's a great <laughs> thing. I mean, no, heck, I would love it really if I saw an angel. What? For real. I worship the one true God now. Not his shadow. I'd like for you to come with me. Your boys too. Right. My boys too? You want you, you want my huh? There's another <laughs> service. Tomorrow night. We're going every night now. Do you want Brian, to see uh, them? I gotta admit you've piqued my interest. Uh Hey boys! Uh oh. <laughs> they're they're eating their snacks in the car. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, 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 I'll, I'll see your angels, Brian. Can I'm uh, kind of scary, Kip. I'm telling you, you you're kind of scaring me, Brian. But I. It's scary. <laughs> <laughs> but you'll see. Okay, you'll see. Yeah. We'll be there. You'll be part of the true faith now. And so that is where we will leave our uh, adventure for now. <laughs> Uh, Kip is going to attend a new type of service. Uh, if uh, if he goes, he might find some uh, dead teenagers uh, <laughs> who seem to be in a little I bit of trouble. I love dead teenagers. Uh, <laughs> thank you so much. That's that's our we we got through character creation. We've we started it. our story. Thank you so much, Joe, Holly, and Greg. You guys were thank amazing you. and fantastic. Find these guys online. Listen to the Mega Podcast. Uh, let them know how much you enjoy their performances, uh, everybody uh, who's listening and watching. And uh, we'll be back next week with more Hunter the Reckoning. Good night, Glass Cannon Nation. Everybody.